Welcome to the One Life One Champ podcast. Woo! <laughs> 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 up, champion. Yo, you know what the problem is? <laughs> Fucking Derek Green got me addicted to a Maz Yerba Mate. Listen to this fucking plug, bro. It's got how many grams? 60, millig- 60 milligrams of caffeine. Right. I haven't drank coffee since right. March. I quit coffee because it makes me shit, gives me jitters, it makes me dehydrated. Life will make you shit. Yeah. And now I'm on this shit and I love it. And I'm fucking hyper every yeah. day. Like that fucking prop? Woo, that was Shout hot. out to my sponsor, Liquid Death, though. I love you, Liquid Death. You're my people. <laughs> I'm part of that company. It's my family. But I have to talk about your Mouth. Anyway, let me do my intro, please. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Derek Green, you're back here. Yes. <laughs> my pandemic COVID lockdown brother. Mm-hmm. And when we go back on tour, I'm never going to see you again. That's not true. Well, oh, thanks for dude. being here and your wonderful voice. I miss you when you're my neighbor and now you live far away from me. It's all good, though. I got an e-bike. So Thanks to your e-bike. You want to you shout out the brand e-bike you use? No, because they're a horrible brand, actually. Oh, but my God. But the bike God. itself, is, it's working. I'm making it work, but it's a long story. Okay. Let, let me introduce the guest okay. now. Yes. Okay. You might have heard this guy on episode 16. It was a phone call. It was a very, very long time ago. I'm way more professional now. Mm. I live with this human. I love this human. Uh, he's one of my favorite songwriters. And uh, I love hugging him and seeing him, but COVID times really can't hug right now. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the podcast, Mr. Walter Schreifels. You yeah. give it up. <laughs> How's that intro? Pretty sick. That was really good. Um, before we start, I got a shout out to Laura Davidson from Sure Microphones. They sent me the new podcast microphone. They sent me all my microphones originally. And thank you so much for that. And also, um, uh, Dre Beats, too. Yeah, I have to shout the sponsors out always. So thank you guys very sound much. Sound even better with this. Issue. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's interesting, right? Yeah. Um, two things. I'm on day four of a juice cleanse, and I got my head tattoo last night, and it was horrible. And last night, Travis Barker wore a OG Start Today shirt on SNL. That's so shout out to sick. Travis for that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, sick. that was cool. Good, good uh, taste. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I hit him up, and he said, "Yo, I had to do it and represent." So yeah. it's really, really sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. Welcome to the podcast, Walter. Thanks. Thanks, fellas. Good to be here. Yeah, I haven't seen you since um, January 25th, 2020, where we, with the last show I played on the Persistence Tour. Right. Wow. That was like, um, seems like forever ago and yeah. kind of like very recent at the same time. Yeah, it's strange. I mean, we talked, we FaceTimed. Yeah. I mean, there's so much things going on with you since the pandemic. You're running marathons. You're running a lot. It's super inspiring. Uh-huh. Put a new record out. Yep. Have the show on Van 66. Mm-hmm. So many things. Um, how is life on tour right now? I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's really cool to get out and see the country again after being, you know, kind of just in New York. Yeah. Which New York is great. I mean, I think probably everyone's experiencing more appreciation for their local environment, you know, yeah. like just like, wow, there's so much to do like within reach of, of uh, New York. But um, seeing the country and, like, uh, you know, seeing Seeing some friends, I mean, I'm not seeing people too much because trying yeah. to keep it pretty tight, but um, but it's awesome. You know, like just being in Los Angeles, I come to Los Angeles like on the reg, like I yeah. see you, I see my friends here like pretty regularly and just um, haven't been here for two years. It's bugged wow. out. So it's um, crazy, man. The, just the feeling of the, of the, the weather, the way that it's, the way that it, the light is here, the, the, you know, there's just like nothing like that, and just like, oh damn, like this is this is great. So, um, yeah. so that's cool, and also just the shows have been awesome, and we got a good squad for for our, uh, that I'm hanging with. So, I'm, is Lou out with you? Lou's not out. He um he was gonna come out on this gig, but he got a gig paying really well with a comedian. Oh, nice. Whose name escapes me, and Lou's always been been interested in the comedy scene. Cool. So I think it's kind of a good a, a better Lou, path for him. Uh, Sound engineer or something? Lou Benavides, he's a merch guy. Merch just king. Okay. New, merch. yeah, pretty much king. Um, mm-hmm. And just a great friend. Super, Shaolin. Super fun guy. He's going to come out in uh, in Atlanta and, and hang with us for a few days. But we got a great merch person, Charlie. She's incredible, and it's great. It's going Awesome, well. man. Um, so we're going to get to record soon, but I'll, also just your jogging thing I mentioned, too. Like yeah. I, I know you've always been in shape. Mm. Um, you pr- pretty much stay- stayed the same size since I've known you. Yep. Um, I don't know what your secrets were back then. <laughs> uh-huh. But seeing you during the pandemic, running more, it's super inspiring. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I upped my game a bit, like um, more on the long distance side of things. And um, it was really cool. I think one of the upsides of COVID, I mean, in my per- experience was um, I was very lucky to have uh, a spot upstate where yeah. I was like, just wasn't around people. And, um, and saved there- you. Yeah, it was just, it was very, it was cool for me, like in that regard. Um, I mean, outside, you know, I know there was like, obviously a lot of people are suffering and, yeah. and that did affect, 
you know, my mindset, but, um, but with nothing to do, it's kind of like when, as a kid, you know, when there's like a blizzard or something like that. Yeah, it's a snow or, day. Yeah, it's a snow yeah. day, but like mm-hmm. no one can do anything. Like I can't bother you. You can't bother me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. it's equal. So like, what are you going to do with the time and, and running and exercising? A lot of people get into that, but I just started to like run further and, and kind of. Like Forrest Gump kind of. I gumped it out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a gump vibe and uh, I've kept on gumping. You did, yeah. but did you run? Before, were you a big runner growing up? I've run probably pretty regularly since my like mid twenties. Okay, and because um, it's just meditative, and uh, especially for touring, it's a nice way to kind of get off campus. Yeah, and uh, see the city a little bit in a way that you wouldn't otherwise. And um, you know, it's it's for me, it's very meditative. Like there's the initial like you know fifteen minutes or something, or being like, God damn it, I'm running. Like, yeah. and then. Then 15 minutes, you're like thinking about something else and then you're not realizing that your body's just moving. And um, and then I can kind of sort things out, you know, like about whatever I'm thinking about, uh, you cool. know, maybe like it's a, a song or something that some sort of issue or something that I'm working on, like someone that, you know, like how to resolve some sort of s- circumstance. And mm. that's kind of like where I do my best thinking. And um, and it's just it, it becomes a habit and it's great. Yes, yeah, so you do it how many times a week usually? Um, I'm probably like about five times a week, four wow. or five times a week. But I don't like I'm not on any sort of like re- regimen or schedule. Yeah. If I'm not feeling it, um, or there's not time, I'm not mad. But what ends up happening is that you just kind of want to do it, you know. Yeah. And I'm also into yoga, so oftentimes if I'm like if I'm uh, you know feeling like sore from a run or something like that, I'll break it up and and just and do yoga too, especially as like. As you get uh, up there, it's like you want to make sure everything's like working. Yeah, up you there know? Age. Yeah, 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 at a certain age, like you just want to make sure, like you know, you, you, all your sh- shits like connected. Yeah, and you look great. They're aging well. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes. music keeps you young, man. For yeah, sure. I mean, you know, youth crew, bro. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. definitely, <laughs> no is, doubt. Is it puts a, you in a mindset. I know, know this is weird, but is it a certain brand of shoes you wear to run? Is it a certain kind? Because I know people are particularly about their shoes. Um, I am running. In Hoka shoes, that's what I heard about. That's yeah, exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah, they're um, they're just I don't. I, at first, I was reluctant to wear them. My brother was really into them. I was wearing New Balance. What was your reluctance about? I mean, I've never I, heard of these shoes. Yeah, so. it's like a, not Nike or something. I mean, I don't know. No, it wasn't. It wasn't an, a brand okay. issue. It was more like the way that the they're like kind of. The shape of the shoe. Okay. Like I have just weird, narrow, long feet. They're like little, just like ironing boards. They're the worst. <laughs> and so the 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 That's Hoka funny. shoe had this like arch in it, this curve, which I guess for some people is like amazing. For me, it was not. Mm-hmm. But then I got sent a pair of Hoka's from somebody that wanted me, to, just like wanted me to check them out. Yeah. And uh, and this particular, you know, they have different styles just like any other so yeah. the one that i had tried on it didn't like but this one is dope it's just like really big cushion very supportive and that's what i need for these little sticks that i run on. i always think of the hookah thing the smoke when i hear that name of the brand oh, right. right 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 it does the put sh- a little yeah hookah. a little bit of uh, hookah. chill hookah. is it called hookah yeah i mean some people smoke refer hookah. to it as a hookah. hookah uh sheets uh, i think some people refer to it as as well Do you smoke but hookah? I, I don't like it so much but i have in the past it, it can be fun you know, okay. in a foreign place. Does, yes. it you high? Does it get you high? No. Okay. Yeah, I've never done it, but it's it looks not, it's like not about getting high. There was like okay, a trend sorry. in uh, in Manhattan for a while yeah, in New York, where it's just like, like these hookah places everywhere. Right. It was a trend in a lot of different yeah. places in Europe. I still think it's pretty popular. Oh yeah, in like Europe it's popular. That, like you go in a basement and people yeah. are there with tea and coffee. Yeah. They got their hookah going on. I would like to get invited <laughs> to something like that. Like, yeah. hey, Walter, come to my house for a hookah thing. <laughs> it's fun, like every now and then. I would do that. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, let's check this out. That's how I want to do it. That'd be kind of sick. Yeah, yeah, but but for now, I'm just, I got the shoes called hookahs. I was just thinking oh. about how Forrest Gump was running in Nike Cortez, which are the most flat-footed Nikes. <laughs> and they're, they're classic <laughs> shoes. They're casual. But they're he's not, hardcore. They're, but he's they're not hardcore. running shoes. If you're no, with Cortez, which I love, yeah. they're, they're not for running. It'll destroy your feet. Dude, yeah. what about playing basketball in Chuck Taylor's. Yeah. yeah like you're a professional. No wonder they're doing all those like kind of set shots like banks and shit because if you're... not bouncy at all. No, you no. hurt. I, I walk a day in, in Converse All-Stars. I mean, you know, Yo, I no need to take way. a few right? days off. My, no uh, my legs are broken. I can't believe I never like 
I value, you know, footwear so much yeah. more now. And it's so important because I was walking around at Punk Rock Bowling uh-huh. with Toby. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then we're in Vegas walking. Yeah. Everywhere. You Jordans, Stan you? was wearing Jordans the entire time. And I was just like not thinking about it. We're, I got back and I was just like the extreme pain. Like right. in my arch. Like yes. in my ankle. And I was like, oh, I have a broken ankle. It's probably from that. Yeah. No. It was from like bad footwear. Yeah. Standing on like horrible. It just got to me. And so finally I had to do the research and found out about all these different inserts and uh-huh. Dr. Soul. Dr. Soul. And sick. they have a whole thing set up in like a CVS where you I look like you take your shoes off uh-huh. and step on this thing and it gives you like a rating of what you need to wow. get. Yeah. It was pretty impressive. But since I learned more about that, uh-huh. it changed the whole game. I can wear my Jordans with the insoles. Yeah, an in. insole oh. can can you can wear anything. I yeah. you know if you do this, that's kind of cool. It's incredible. Um, you sound pretty, I got, you sound pretty like old it. talking about. This I know. I'm just thinking like this is this is Matt Hold like route we took down, but. But, but it's, it's I think the ex, it's, it's life, real life, man. and if you're younger and this isn't yeah. happening to you, it will. Yes, it will. It, it, it will. will. And, and actually, if you're younger, think about it early on. Yeah, I wish Ooh. I would have done that. But early. the the other side of it is this: because <laughs> my brother, my brother was running like barefoot. Like he got into Shout this barefoot run. Shout out to Dylan. Yeah, my That's brother Dylan. Dylan. Much and, love. And. Uh, and he was saying how like the native, uh, you know, people like the the runners that lived in in you know. Uh, I don't say ancient America or whatever. Like they're running on just barefoot. Those, yeah. mother, you know, oh, they yeah. just because they didn't have and they were doing great. Uh, and so there's a whole school of runnings, like long distance runners saying don't run in anything. So it's like the more, like it's kind of like the princess and the pea, like the more like kind of, um, uh, mattresses you pile up Mm -hmm. the less you are in touch with actually what you're doing and that that has a certain adverse health effect so i mean basically there isn't a single thing in the whole world that you can't look at from both sides and and that's true be passionate or pissed off about shout out to the flintstones though yeah like look at those they were driving cars (laughs) with those fuckers Yeah, we'd be, hard. Yeah. Cars, we would not yeah. make it. We I'm would definitely... we'd be lifting the car. We'd be like, oh Jesus, I don't care. Let's just walk. I'm a fan of technology. I don't think I could do the Flintstones route. But it, it, it is crazy about talking about insoles in your fifties because you would never talk about that. Why? That's why my feet are messed up. Like now. we always walked around Jordans or Converse through the winters of, yeah. in Manhattan, all that. Right. The best. I don't know. I think Converse looked the best on the Ramones. They look cool. On yeah, them. they look, they like, look they cool. So hard, they yeah. always will look cool. And to be fair, they they didn't even always wear those they wore these like kind of um procades they wore procades but there was also i think they would call them like skips they're just like generic Skippies wow like yeah. generic like 99 cent store kind of sneakers um they had their look down bro yeah, they just yeah. looked super hard and cool and always classic. i like how ian rocks the jack purcells mm. that's his thing the jack converse. purcell yeah. it's kind of like the more elegant kind of tennis converse vibe is it <laughs> yeah right. yeah yeah jack purcell was a tennis tennisman Mm. Some real I'm picturing him with his like that. scar, with his like t- his fucking sweater around his neck, like yeah, kind of around. Absolute tennis oh, man. Oh, Jack, Jack Purcell, tennis Jack man. Jack Purcell here. Um, so, <laughs> have you run a couple marathons already? Uh, I've only run one, but I'm training for the. Uh, I'm not training right now for it, but I'm training for the uh, the Brooklyn um, marathon, which uh, a full twenty. Is it twenty six? It's twenty six point three or two wow. or something it's something point something nice. <laughs> yeah yeah that's amazing and do you have like running partners and stuff um i'll run with friends every once in a while like um i enjoy that but at the same time i like doing it by myself for yeah. all the reasons i was saying before it's just like i'm in my own head yeah. and like and the other person's pace if they're like naturally faster than you you're like god damn slow down and if the other person's slow you're like shit yeah. let's yeah. go bro what are you doing yeah. i mean i'm not really, really like that but it, it but it comes like that but I've had some, you know, when I do do that, it's always cool in yeah. the end. You know, that those are really more my apprehensions about it than actually what the experience is. Because if you're running with someone that runs slower than you, it's actually good to run slow. You get more like muscle uh, okay. built out of running slow. And uh, if r- someone's running faster than you, you just tell them to slow the fuck down. Yeah. Right. Slow down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Slow down. You got good knees? Um, I think... Jumped around. They're working, bro. They're yeah. working. I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for, um, for, for yeah, the movement of all, yeah. that all my shit's working. Brian Goldstein told me yesterday you guys are on the same app together. He's like, dude, Walt has got a really good pace. Oh, cool. He says nice. you guys give each other thumbs up on. Yeah. The oh, yeah. I, I thumbs up Brian all times running <laughs> Santa Santa Monica. He I runs know, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He's 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 into it. Um, 
I've been I I was getting my pace up pretty fast, and then I have a friend that's like a really awesome marathon runner. Yeah, and uh, he said, "Dude, you're running too fast. Slow down." Wow. wow. Yeah. Um. Not that I was running that fast for marathon runners. No, but fast for me. Right. Okay. right. Um. But because he's his, and then I look at his his app, and he's running like way faster than I am. I'm like, "What's happening, bro?" And then he goes like, "Well, you haven't seen my real time. That's mm-hmm. like your like super flat fast time is like my slow time." I was like, ah. Oh. You pay attention to heart rate and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh no, okay. I I don't I I don't really check the 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 stats on that at all. I mean, it's just kind of cool to like. Sometimes if you see that you, I don't even know when I'm running fast. Okay. It's just like I'll, you're just in the mood. You're just in the, you're mode, just in the yeah. zone. That's yeah. where you're at, and then I'll see it. I'm like, oh fuck, I ran fast. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then other times you think like I'm doing really good and I'm having a great run. You're just like you were running slow. Um, but it's like any sort of physical activity or, or anything. You yeah. know, you just go at it one day and it's one way and you go at it the next day and it's it's a different... It's how you feel. And sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, so many variables, so... Yeah, that was super inspiring. I want to run more because of seeing you run, you know what I mean? Oh, dude, sure. it's great. It's, it's great. just so, yeah. so cool to have that time and, you know, you're just like... It, it's like... it's uh, it's all, You're also telling your body like, hey... I like you. Let's go out and do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like your dog. Like you don't take, take your dog your body out. for a walk. You're taking <laughs> your body for a walk. Your yeah. dog, your body wants to go out and work. Yeah. And you especially know, mentally. It's, it's yeah. incredible. You, you know, probably like sleep good saying. at night too. Yeah. Cause yeah. you, you're, you're more tired and I guess, I don't know, but I think that it's just like the basic message is like, I'm sitting at side time to do something like for myself and for my body. Yeah. And my body goes, dude, I love you too. Let's yeah. go. It tremendously helped, uh, Especially in the recording process for for us, like in the studio, oh. mm-hmm. I was in uh, Sweden in the middle of nowhere, uh-huh. and I was just like, you know what, uh, we're gonna start recording later for vocals, you uh-huh. know. Yeah. So in the morning, I would get up and they were in just like farmland and just start running, and Where I was that hate at? running. It was yeah. in Urubru, Sweden. Okay. And and there's just nobody around, you know, just uh-huh. farms, great air. Uh-huh. And then I just got addicted to it. But it's just like clearing, thinking about yes. lyrics, thinking lyrics about what's is going great. on. It's yeah. great for lyrics. It's like, oh, my God, yeah. Uh-huh. But it, I love that zone, like you were talking yeah. about, that you get in, where it's just like unbelievable. It's just like you can go anywhere, your body, you're you're not even thinking about your body. It's yeah. just like you're just doing it. You're just motion. doing it. You're moving. And it's so important. You know, I yeah. think it's very... Uh, therapeutic in so many ways i loved it it's connected to playing too like the the i mean it's sort of different yeah, but you know and stuff. yeah when when you're playing a show you're just like you're not really aware of what's going on right. you're just moving yeah. and so uh, obviously i would say playing a show is to look a little closer to like a basketball game but like mm. um running's more peaceful but yeah. it's that same thing that like mind body exactly. separation and you're just like you know this kind of like be here now experience you know yeah. if you think, think overthink a show like if you're on stage and you're thinking about lyrics do you for- start to forget shit? oh yeah of course that's every <laughs> or like whenever it totally happens I've done like, that why shit am before. I thinking about it stop thinking about it oh Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anytime, I think it's like anytime you think like, oh, I'm doing pretty good at this. Right. Is when you, when you like fuck it up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just try to keep in the flow. But yeah, that's I loved when I saw I saw Black Sabbath when they uh, Damn. when they got back together. <laughs> well, it was uh, the re- it wasn't original. It was like, what, but it was the original lineup. Yeah, and they came back. It was Pantera and Deftones opening, and I had fucking awesome seats. I was like in the fifth row of Black Sabbath. It was so cool at Nassau Coliseum, which is like the wow. most yeah kind of metal dirtbag place to see a band <laughs> it, it is it can't believe it still exists that place it, it maybe it doesn't i don't know but uh i was really thrilled to see that ozzy like i'm seeing around the whole arena everyone knows like every single iota of this band every single song and i'm like i'm hearing like you know a bridge in one song and just thinking like okay that band is completely based on that bridge wow you know what i mean like they're so influential it's so amazing it's like culturally so magnificent and then i see like ozzy's like reading from a teleprompter he doesn't even know the fucking words wow he doesn't know the words and i was like i love that <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's yeah. great yeah. and he's a little bit older than us so. yeah of course yeah, yeah. of course it's but lot. it's just like he's, he's a human probably dude. a little bit more than us too i think a little bit at more. least me for sure yeah i mean yeah. he's he's probably had his brains rattled quite a few times oh, over i the would years. think so um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah teleprompter for sure yeah. yeah um i have a question about the title of the new record distant Population." yeah is that a play on words like because it was written during the pandemic maybe social distance i don't know uh-huh. is that is it, oh i didn't even think of that different hmm. populations different worlds have 
living like this during the time you record. Oh, and I thought about that today. That is very cool. I, I think a lot of things kind of pop off Pretty of good, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was good. Um, I really thought about that today. I don't know why. I, I was thinking I, it was the lyrics were written before okay. the pandemic. So I was thinking probably more on the lines with a, along the lines of um, in, in an, an initial way, like um, here I am in New York City. I have restaurants. I have all this kind of cool shit around me. I'm doing all this stuff, you know. Um, but yet how I participate in this society and what allows me to like be here mm -hmm. is is connected to the way people are living in countries far away from yeah, me okay. and like how we're affecting each other like whether that's through like uh online you know kind of connection and our awareness of each other yeah versus like you know i mean in, in political senses and in, in like economic sense like in a political sense it could be you know like what the f you know united states just got out of afghanistan like what the fuck were we doing over there that yeah, whole yeah, yeah. time like but yet i'm living in new york having cool vegan food and like yeah. and paying taxes that are paying for people to get droned at a fucking wedding and Good and point. and you know it's like okay to be like patriotic but this is like beyond that it's like mm -hmm. it's like how are we affecting each other and what are we doing to each other because that. that that's our our um how how we relate to each other yeah. uh, as human beings and and it is is if if someone cast violence on someone else like yes okay so but that is also violence on yourself and like that's what's yeah. what's happening and i think on a, on a more and a more smaller level um you know what what am i doing on the train like sitting here like on my phone everybody's like everybody's engaged in their little scenario yeah. on, on the train or like at, at any moment in your own household and, and i'm not it's not an anti-technology thing is because it's like that's just where we're at but just in the sense that we're so individuated right now as as people like so i got my instagram account you know i'm doing this like i'm gonna take a picture here today like i'm doing that i'm i'm creating this sort of like thing about my life that's individuating like my choices mm -hmm. yeah. my what i identify with and all this kind of stuff but in that in that quest like i'm becoming as a human being like way more alone in many ways and and that's what's sure. happening to everybody you Great know where we're super man. isolated you yeah. know what i mean in, in our quest to be like i'm gonna be you know i can do anything or i'm gonna be this person or i'm gonna be yeah. that person you know it's just like it's it's not a moral judgment because it's just like the society that we live in yeah but but if you you know took a hundred years ago like obviously like you know, my mom's family, she came from like 14 children. Like your fucking life is your for You're in that house. Yeah. 14, you can't get, that's your zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And family is that bonding thing. Or maybe it was the church. And so your identity would be like, I'm a member of this family. Right. I'm a, I believe in this God and I'm probably going to marry this girl and we're going to have a family like this and yeah. that kind of thing. So like, that seems like in some ways, like, to us like lame like you don't have any choices like you know you can't be gay you can't mm -hmm. be you know yeah. there's the, the, like that's whack right so we don't want that but at the same time like people's understanding of who they were was like more communal and all that and we're just like right now in a sort of very rapid transition so i don't know like I, that's that's just see i was just vibing on that's that idea vibe though <laughs> you wrote that before the pandemic yeah, because I, you know, even like in the, before that, dude, the world was fucking crazy before the I pandemic. Know, I know, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. January sixth, that happened before the pandemic. Yeah, that's true. Like people are like fucking, and I'm not saying like, um, I'm not getting into the politics of it. I'm just yeah. just c connecting to like how people are th feeling and thinking about yeah. themselves and about their neighbor and um, the the state of of um, discourse is just like and really division, the world being divided yeah divided on any that. fucking thing anything. you know yeah, so it's yeah. like a any sort of like you know it, it's it's like you can't put anything forth without people passionately say oh it's a nice day out ah, it's i've seen better uh <laughs> well i think it's kind of nice well fuck you it's ugly out know, you know like know, do you think that well i scientifically believe that it's not a nice day right. you know what i mean and it just becomes like everyone's so fucking crazy because but that's mostly on the internet too nobody's really gonna have an argument in your face about the weather no and i think that that's you know that, what i mean that, mm, yeah. no i haven't seen well, it i don't know right. yeah okay. yes and no but there's a lot unsaid you yeah, know what i mean true. as well because you just don't want to like 
hey, I love my friend. I might have different views from them. So like, I don't need to talk to them about the things that I disagree with them about. Right. Is that being <laughs> fake? I don't know. Maybe it is, but I'm just trying to like get through my yeah. time with the love that I've got and like, and with, with the, 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 you know, the, the relationships that I have and the people that I care about to like do my part to maintain them. And maybe yeah. there's, there's some things that it's just like, you don't want to talk about it. Maybe that's bullshit, but that's like, there's a lot of bullshit in the world. There is. Yeah. But stuff like that is what yeah. I'm thinking about how yeah, we're like, that, how man. we're distant from each other. Like, you know, why, why is everyone so pissed off about Mexican people or, or people trying to get into the country immigration? Um, okay. Because they think they're going to take something from us that we, that we should have because we're here already. But what's about, what about the effects of why those people are coming here in the first place? What does the United States government have to do mm -hmm. with yeah, the, the conditions that are creating that crisis? Yeah. And like, there's deeper there. Yeah. It's deeper than I that. Guess, yeah, but people just kind deep. of like resign themselves to the thing that they, feel about it and it doesn't mean that it's not real or it doesn't mean that's not valid mm -hmm. yeah but it becomes um sort of uh you know uh, what is it called when you turn it into like a weapon you know weaponized mm -hmm. you know weaponized, what i mean yeah. to like keep other people's information away from you or to beat other people with your opinion and um people are stressed and fucked up from it so anyway they, god yeah. damn dude i just went no, on a tangent great. With you that, fucking but. broke it down so mm -hmm. i was really off with the um, social distance no that was cr that was okay. great okay, dude okay. that was super prescient and i think it like kind of winds into into that kind of shit so yeah. I, I think it's very on point and um so that was recorded before the pandemic or during the pandemic the vocals were recorded the the all the tracking we finished the tracking on my birthday on march 10th and then lockdown was like on the 15th. So after the persistence oh, wow. tour, after persistence, after persistence tour? I went, went home after persistence, wow. finished that record or re did the vote. I don't know. Maybe we had recorded part of it by the time I was wow. out on persistence and maybe just went and finished it. And, um, and at that point I was just like, Oh yeah. You know, this COVID thing, I think China's going to fucking whatever. They're, yeah. they're going to take care of this. They're going to, you know, disappear whoever has it and it'll be fine and then you know shit just broke down crazy really man. hard but yeah. um but i was really happy to have the the, the bulk of the, of the, the yeah. music completed so i didn't have to do shit during covid really. where'd you record that at um with in Pennsylvania? Um, yeah in pennsylvania with will yip who's an amazing producer you worked with him on the last on the, all the, the on last... interiors the last the, okay. the prior one yeah um uh -huh. i had worked with him i produced um title fight record oh. uh shed and will was in the engineer and i worked with him on that and we just had such a great time and he's so talented and so amazing and from that time he had just done so many really really cool records uh we, we were talking about turnstile earlier yeah. he, he, he did some turnstile records uh code orange just like bounce composure so many great records and uh he's just so talented and really uh gets us as people and so whenever there's like some sort of like uh, musical question we had someone from the outside that like had a, an objective opinion that we all respected yeah it's good and he's a lot of fun and so yeah we recorded out in philadelphia and um you know kind of it's in the suburbs and uh, we got an airbnb house that was pretty cool that's awesome yeah do you usually think i'm sorry did i cut you no yeah go go i don't know do you when you're writing do you usually have lyrics before the music or the music before? I would love to, but I usually just, it comes out of just the fucking stress of having to sing. I'm like, God damn it. If I don't <laughs> sing, if I don't write something cool on this, it's going to suck and it's going to be on me. I kind of remember this about you, like in the, oh, in I the hate it. quicksand starting phases. Oh, I'm of not like, one of these dudes like on tour, like sitting with like a journal and shit. Okay. Like, you know, I do put th thoughts in my uh, phone out of like a certain sort of, um, like holy shit that's kind of a cool thing maybe i could yeah. use that later you know but i don't like i, I don't right. do that too much so uh mm -hmm. so yeah but in the end um so it's coming like from the music yeah and another thing before i forget yeah so did the artwork come first no no actually it's interesting okay um we i mean yes and no we uh Cause i love the artwork thank you and it's thanks, great the thanks. video stuff it's it's fucking brilliant oh it's, thanks so much mm -hmm. um we the cool thing is we finished all the tracking i mean we still had to mix it during covid but uh that you know we just took our time with it and it was super fun in that regard because there was no pressure uh but the artwork initially um sergio had put you know sent something to our you know our, our thread about you know this this kind of like monster image this like japanese monster 
image. And it was a really cool image. It was from like the 60s or the 70s, oh, but cool. we, we couldn't use it because it was like, you know, copyrighted. We didn't know the artist. And uh, so it got me thinking about this artist that I know, uh, Tetsu Nori uh, Yara Nara, Nara Yara. And um, he uh, is uh, amazing. I, I, he, I saw his work at this comic book store around the block from me or illustrated novel kind of place. I don't know what they call it. But um, I thought his work was perfectly like fun and scary and um, and 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 was allowed you to kind of, you know, how, like what, the kind of brand of record like I mean, a lot of metal records are like this, but like Eddie, like what's the world that Eddie lives in? Right. You yeah, know, when yeah, you're yeah. listening to Iron Maiden, you could be thinking of like these brummy dudes from, you know, or I don't know if they're from Birmingham, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> whatever Iron Maiden dudes do, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like they're people. Right. So, you know, that's cool. Um but when you think of Eddie and his world, it takes the music to mean something like Ace is High. It's like yeah. something yeah. else. So um, I thought that that would be a fun, or we we all thought that that would be a fun way to, to like, you know, here I was just telling you, breaking down like what does distant populations mean? Yeah. It's sort of like heady or stuff, or it can be, it can be yeah. that. Um, but if you put it in this like kind of magical universe where it's like kind of Star Wars-y, it can mean something else, which is what Star Wars is really a lot of, or Star Trek or something mm-hmm. like we're, yeah. we're, we're projecting our, you know, hopes and fears and, and all these kind of stuff on this like magical universe and tapping into it in that way. So it doesn't have to be about, you know, the fucking mundane shit in our own world or the yeah, things yeah. that we have that are too loaded that we feel too strongly about, you know, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 Incredible. Um, one of the, one of the songs on there that I like too is, uh, did I write it? Did I spell it wrong? Rusted? Brussels? Brushed? Brushed. I'm sorry. I wrote it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My spelling's so bad. Bru- you look at my shit. Oh. My writing is so bad. I'm sorry, bro. Oh, my God. I like the hip hop intro. <laughs> yes. I like. I love that. Like sample. Like, I'm, yeah. It was awesome. I just oh, like the, cool. the vibe of that. Yeah. Especially if you listen to Turn Sound, they have cool intros in between their stuff and melodies and stuff. But that was. Yo, yeah, oh, cool. I'm you glad you dug I mean? that. And then and then this is, this is a crazy <laughs> song. I'm going to read but. but Katakana, what's it called? Katakana. 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 Yeah. So, hey. so, kat- <laughs> so Katakana, I don't know if this happened on purpose, but Katakana has almost the same riffing as can opener. Uh, you get, you got it. <laughs> you win. Bingo. No, I love, I just love that. <laughs> yeah. Because I listened to it. Uh, we, we talked about it. I was just yeah, running. I was like, oh my God, it's got the same. But yeah. I loved. Yeah. It works for that song. It's, it's callback. Like right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like yeah. it worked for can cool. opener. It works for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unless you really know Quicksand, and this may be your first time hearing them, you might not know about. No, it was Can't great because it, it definitely had those elements that made Quicksand uh-huh. all on this but album. I was tripping. Like yeah. the was basis like, of this album, uh-huh. which was really, it became like one of my favorite albums. Was Thank that you. on purpose? Uh, be- uh, it Sorry. was on, on purpose. It was. Uh, I mean, I was realizing that it was Can Opener. <laughs> I did. I'm so glad I mentioned. It. I did Very recognize crazy. it, but I just thought we're recontextualizing. I mean, it's slightly different. It's kind of like um, Am I the first person to mention to you, to you. Uh, you might be, but I mean, we talk about it. It's an open secret. Okay. Um, okay. but uh, you heard it first here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we we think it's the more fun can opener. Okay. L- like the other can opener. Can opener too. Can opener is a great. You put you posted that song the other yeah, day. That's yeah. Because yeah. I've been tripping. And on I it. was just thinking about the other day. It's like fuck. Can opener is a good song. Um, Dude. because I. I don't usually think about that one too much, but it is a really cool one. But um, this one has got like I don't know. Just, it's just we recontextualize it. It's yeah, got this it's all, kind I of think like it's cool we can do that recycle or yeah. in a sense and like yeah. I mean, what, that's what for a har- hardcore trick. Like, what is expectations but positive outlook backwards? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Or <laughs> <laughs> but I was tripping. I was like, oh what? I heard God. that. I was like, oh my god, that's fucking so. <laughs> I heard this before. But this is still a great song too. Is you know what I mean? What's that song mean? What's that title mean? Katakana is a. Uh, the Japanese have a, a few different alphabets. You know how you look at the, the Japanese writing, or I think probably all Asian writing, like Chinese, probably is the same. So they have all these ancient characters, and then they have some other kind of like secondary, uh, like kind of how how they you know write in business yeah. is like another kind of thing. And then they have another one where like what are foreign words? How do you convey foreign words and uh katakana does foreign words in in japanese wow and so um i just think it's cool to um the idea of taking something that's new or foreign is like not really the right word exactly but um yeah something that you don't know and to uh bring it into your own language and to uh you know assimilate or to embrace you know what i mean To, to 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 as you're on the earth like you know 
collect and learn and yeah. and be so I, I don't know, I thought that was a, a co- I always thought it was so cool that the Asian countries have because how the fuck I mean I, it's I sound stupid saying it, but how the hell do you understand that I have enough mm-hmm. trouble with the 26 letters that we have yeah and they've got <laughs> you know like yeah you know this little thing over there and like you draw a house and then there's like a bird over there and that means something I don't know <laughs> I mean, it sounds ignorant, but you know, but that they created a, a, an alphabet to to um, for for that kind of thing. I thought that's a cool idea. Yeah, do you read a lot? Uh, I read, but I I don't think I'm a good reader these days. I'm I'm I pick up. All, I actually wrote one of the songs about uh, about it. Is like I read books. I read like a hundred pages, and then I'm just done. That's, my, that's the song I was just thinking about yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday. yeah. So. You, you get off track, you forget about it, go back to it or something. I go through periods, into. you know, where I'm like really into it. Yeah. And, and then I, I find myself when I can read a book easily, it's like usually nonfiction. And I feel like that's sometimes cool. But I, what I want to read is fiction because I think fiction is more challenging. Mm-hmm. And, and so, uh, uh, but I, I haven't really been reading much. I'm reading this book now called um, All Night Stand. There's a really cool bookstore around the block for me that's selling like um, just really cool editions of, of just books. They were just really well crea- yeah. curated, mm-hmm. like hard covers, like where the covers are fucking dope from like the 70s or 60s, kind of thing that you put on your on your bookshelf and it's just like, damn, that looks cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I took one and of And then these, you never read it or you do read it? I'm trying to like buy, <laughs> I'm trying to like, so it doesn't just become some sort of like um thing <laughs> yeah. where I'm just spending money, but I don't mind supporting a store like that. But um. Yeah, read the friggin' book. Mm-hmm. So I'm reading this book. It's called All Night Stand, and it's about this band in the '60s, like um, from like Liverpool. They're from Liverpool, and it's about them touring in the, around the same time as the Beatles, like going to Germany. So they're talking about Germany, oh, shit. and it's like their experience with Germany is like, dude, I know what that's like. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But it's from the '60s. You know, like their vibe is. Um, so it's interesting. I can relate to it. You know, like that. That kind of. I mean, people touring in the '60s is not that different from people touring now in a lot of ways. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, and then the New Direction Vans channel, mm-hmm. 66. Like, mm-hmm. how did that come about? It was so cool seeing that pop up during the pandemic. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, my friends, I just, from over the years playing Vans, House of Vans and stuff like that, that I, I've just become friends with people yeah. at Vans. And uh, I have a friend, uh, a really special person that I know from um, from New York. She used to do a thing called the... Um, uh, rock lottery okay. and what you do is you go you show up early morning uh, on like a saturday early morning and there's a bunch of musicians and you know bass players drummers singers etc uh, a whole full room full of them we did it at the knitting factory and you just draw lots and you make up a band that day mm. wow <laughs> and wow. then you have to play the show that night you have to write four songs you can do four one co- songs That's you have to do crazy. one cover but you do got to do four songs That's a lot. Wow. and it's ringers <laughs> you know like people that are good yeah Uh, okay yeah i mean not everybody's you know at a high i think everyone's at a pretty enough level to get invited Mm -hmm. of course (laughs) so um there was great people the band that i did it with um delicate steve was in it delicate steve is an amazing guitar player uh he does instrumental music he's i'm a huge fan um and we were in a band together i didn't know him at all okay uh and we our band freaking rocked so hard <laughs> really? we fucking crushed that thing oh, we were so we were so stoked wow. and and everyone did covers we didn't do any covers we wrote four original songs awesome and they were badass and did um, they learn the lyrics by that night i didn't sing okay okay there was that was That's the beauty cool. of it is like here we are you know it's like kind of one of these survival games like yeah you know what i mean like what what, what do you know how to do right. i know how to cook i know how to start fires i i'm a <laughs> fast runner i've got a strong back right. you know like so it was like that and uh this one kid wanted to sing so we're like good have at it and um the cool thing is no one's like uh calling you on not knowing the lyrics i yeah. guess you could have done anything just, yeah um, you can make them up as you yeah, go along, so, too. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, on the spot. So anyway, I'm, this is a long story short. Uh, <laughs> the person who ran Rock Lottery works at Vans and and uh, was involved in the Channel 66 thing. So uh, cool, so invited me to do it, and it's super fun. Where and do you film it at? We film it in Williamsburg on uh, on North Six, right by the Vans store there. Okay. And I've just it's been such a cool journey of like learning about relearning about hardcore, especially contemporary yeah. hardcore. New shit too. There's so much stuff. It's really. I think it's really popping off right now. I mean, maybe it's because I'm just happen to be paying attention. So I right. think, mm-hmm. I think that that's true, mm-hmm. but, um, I, I believe I'm right about it because there's just so much energy and, um, you know, uh, people power going towards this like idea. And I think the music, uh, you know, what would be considered hardcore, you know, has always been kind of, uh, 
difficult to put a finger on you because totally. you could say like okay we're talking about black train jack so yeah. is black train jack like a hardcore band i mean in a lot of ways they're like just like a band with mm -hmm. cool songs that yeah. are happen to be fast like good point it's about the 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 ethos or the the idea behind it that yes. kind of makes it hardcore and i find that you know because some th or another band could be like what what is that why is that hardcore it sounds like a metal band like what's, hey the, what's it hey breed hardcore is, kids right. yeah. yeah like how why is that not just a metal band it's mm. about the ethos i agree you yeah. know what i mean so it's interesting to see More how than the music it, yeah it's about like what's behind it i mean diy is certainly a part of it you know like yeah. i think it has to do with which I think is a, a, a very cool thing about it that prepped us early for life in the, these times is that, you know, doing shit yourself is like, you know, making the t-shirt, making the call to do the show, yep. um, you know, setting up the rehearsal, getting the shit together, getting the van, you know, or bringing your friends into it to like to boost the signal of like what it is. Of and, course. and I see that happening now in, in such an incredible way because a lot of the information is out there. So what are people doing like when I did it, there was like a, a sh crappy list of phone numbers that like 12 <laughs> people had. <laughs> you From know? the whole country, yeah. Yeah. And then they invented the fax machine. And then like all of a sudden, all of a sudden, yeah. 100 people had this shitty list. <laughs> yeah. And um, but now like the information is so incredible. I mean, it's just like matching the stage diving. It's just like more fucking crazy and, and athletic and, and uh, no, exciting. It's true. So I, I love it, and uh, the people I work with are awesome and fun, and I bring my friends on. And, and you lose on there a lot too. Lose on. Uh, I've had uh, Justin Skirty on a lot. My friend Drew is on a lot uh, from Bold, and oh, uh, nice. had cool guests. And just I'm learning about, you know, like I'm not like saying I'm hip to everything, but I am relatively knowledgeable. I mean, my my Discovery Weekly on Spotify just went fucking crazy from all the hardcore I've been listening wow. to. I had all my cool like shit that I was into, my like new age vibes and soul <laughs> jams. And then all of a sudden it's just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you listen to new stuff all the time. Uh, I've slowed down slightly because it was just like, I couldn't A listen lot. to my discovery weekly. It was like, everything was just hardcore. So, um, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm getting into a lot of a lot of the new stuff and just really digging on um, on how this hardcore thing just kind of keeps re-energizing and yeah. keeps attracting people and um, still has like an appeal that I think is uh, yeah, it's never become popular, you know. Although even Travis is wearing a grill biscuit shirt on Saturday Night Live, it's just like a T-shirt on Saturday Night Live. It's yeah. not like popular, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And I think that's kind of awesome because once something becomes like popular like some of my favorite bands i'd be like i love this band it's my favorite band this band's my favorite band and then when i see everyone at high school is into them i'm like man i'm not into them anymore because yeah, it, cool anymore. Yeah. it just doesn't doesn't make me feel like an individual like guy it doesn't mm. characterize me anymore and i think hardcore has done a good job of dodging that bullet of never being like you know punk has gotten it you Great. know, like we're punk, you know, Green Pop, Day, punk, whatever, I'm yeah. punk too. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well then you're, you know, I mean, I'm not disparaging it. Everyone should like what they like, but you know, it's a com com very commodified yeah. hot topic. It's not like shocking. Yeah. You know? The cool about something like Travis wearing that shirt, it sends a shout out and signal to all of us who know what it is. Mm -hmm. So like the few that really know, I mean, a lot of people know, I'm saying like, it's, it's a group of people that would know that. Like, okay, that's, that's all we, 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 yeah. that's sick. Travis knows, dude. That's Travis so cool. is Travis has experienced a lot of different stuff, and he recognizes like yeah, fucking grill biscuits, bro. That's pretty sick. <laughs> it's the yeah. shit. So it's uh, like not a subliminal shout, but it's to the people who come from the core. You're right. Know. Yeah. Like that's amazing. You yeah. Know that people are like what's a grill biscuit? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, it's true. I I think it's I think that that's at where it should be. I think that's why it has a, a appeal. Yeah. To to kids because they can make it. A they can make it their own. And always, if you say like. Oh, what are you into? Oh, I'm into emo. Oh, I'm into punk. And then you say, Oh, I'm into hardcore. Kind of sounds like this motherfucker's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I, he seems like a nice guy, or like this girl seems like she's pretty cool, but there must be a little Even bit. Even to this day. Yeah, it just sounds badass. You know, it's kind of like, what is there? There's hardcore porn. That's yeah. like that's like porn, but like hardcore. Like mm -hmm. it's really, you know, and then there's just like hardcore music. Like it just sounds like there's none more extreme, but then you listen to it, and some of it just sounds like pop music, and yeah. it's and it's and it doesn't mean it's not hardcore, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. And some of it just sounds like just pure dark death, 
and yeah and that's also hardcore you know it's yeah. about like where you play how you make your t-shirts and what record labels you're on yeah and and like who you ha, ha, that kind of thing and um i just find it super interesting in that in that way because you know in these times where it's like you know we were growing up when shoes were not as comfortable as they are now <laughs> um <laughs> You know, you basically could choose from like the you know the five fucking breakfast club categories. You know what I mean? Like, and they were all like, you know, in the mall for you to 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 join up to. Yeah. Whereas now it's just like like everything, dude. There's like a shade between every single thing, and it's that true. and that is the, that's I think as much as like I could paint the world in dire in a dire way. Like I think that that's awesome that that mm-hmm. people have that kind of thing you know yeah so yeah hardcore's like that and what about like um like new hip-hop stuff you listen to hip-hop i go into phases um and i'm ju- i was in kind of like maybe last year i was really listening to a lot of hip-hop but i mean uh like danny brown i really love um uh kendrick lamar obviously are like these like level uh, that's just like insane yeah. like i don't even it, they're just like so fucking genius it's 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 crazy it's like yeah more than radiohead like blows my mind mm-hmm. like um kendrick lamar especially do you uh, look at lyrics and break down lyrics into since you are a writer of lyrics like hip-hop and stuff? i was listening to actually yeah going into distant population i was listening to a lot of it just for the words okay because like there's no way that you can i don't think it's possible for kendrick lamar to like plot all that out he has to just mm-hmm. be like always in the flow and then those things just come out so i'm just trying to listen to it to like absorb it into my brain so that when i start saying things like all the good stuff i've ever come up with is about going over the bar of the line like where it's just like you're saying something that you think is going to be end here but it doesn't end there it ends there Mm -hmm. or it connects over there that's the really cool arty shit that, that people love whether they understand it intellectually or not that's what's fun and um hip hop just like on such another level and then sometimes we're just sort of out of it like i remember telling friends oh man have you gotten into this band called the cool kids they're great and it's like dude that's old (laughs) or like or like you know um who did north north you know that song no um i don't know i'd send to someone else like dude yeah of course i know that that's old you know because for me i'm just like you know i'll get into it for like just check back in but it you know it might might that pendulum might swing like on a two to three year clip yeah could you write like a straight hardcore record right now if you wanted to? Um, Can you go back and forth? And like when I think of like um, A Parts for B Actors, one of my favorite Rival School songs. Oh, thank you. And then it just got a feeling and a vibe to it. Then, then you go back to like, I don't know, Hold Your Ground or yeah. what fucking start to it. Well, that's more like poppy, but. Stylistically, yes, totally yeah. could do it. But um, I think the, the lyrics are so important. Like yeah. you have to like, the lyrics got to be fucking on point. And I think a lot of lyrics in hardcore, like, um, I mean, you can you can make it by with saying something very very basic and still have it be great because yeah. because you have a uh, heart behind it. There's like meaning behind it, and there's like, um, but uh, I guess I'm coming from having written the songs in hardcore that I wrote. Like, I I'm really proud of them, and I yeah. feel like I somehow covered a, a lot of the bases. You did. Like, how do I hold my ground harder than hold my ground? Yeah. <laughs> you know how do I. <laughs> How do I? How do I have higher hopes than high hopes? Fact, yeah. yeah, you know, like I kind of just hoped it out of the, the park, and you I covered everything. I, I mean, no, I haven't. Of course not. <laughs> but I mean that that's the that's the mental impediment to it, and also like that. Um, I'm pretty happy with that part of my of her. Like I'm more yeah. I'm more into like seeing what I can do that's out of that because I feel yeah. like I've done that really well. Yeah, and I'm really really psyched on how that keeps reflecting well upon me and reminds me. And of, aging well too, sound wise, everything wise, yeah. all of it. It, it just it, it it reminds me of like where I came from, like yeah. my my initial intentions and the 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 kind of school that I came up with, and that energizes me to like want to try to do something that like you know on this new record, even doing a new quicksand record is like yeah takes some. I mean, I'm not it's not it's not like so amazing, but I mean, it's just like why even fuck with it? Because you make a new record, everyone already likes quicksand. Well, you don't need to make another record. Mm-hmm. So if we're gonna make a new record, we've got to be really fucking good and have like 
a, a point behind it. Yeah. And so like that to me was an interesting challenge to do that. And also within that, the style of the songs that we did within Quicksand is like, we're going to take you someplace that some places like, yeah, we're going to give you a can opener again. And you're, so if you like can opener, <laughs> you're going to be stoked. We gave you the can. Hold on to the can if you if you if you if you're scared on this next one, because it's totally weird or <laughs> maybe or not weird. But, you the know, sequencing is perfect. But it's album. different. Thank you. Yeah. You do that, too. Um, we sequenced the album. We talked about it. Um, the mastering guy did a great job, though, with the time. And God, I can't his name escapes me it's really fucked up but are you super anal on it like are you with that record to the very end obviously it goes and gets mastered whatever that but like uh-huh. the secret do you like are you on that shit super hands-on i i think i'm nicely checked by my friends in the mm. band um because between sergio alan and will and even our manager uh you know our team like as we're listening to this record like i don't want to fly off the handle and be like neurotic about something mm-hmm. and if other people are like if I'm questioning something, I don't feel weird about saying like, "Hey, I think this is a little bit loud," and, and I have and I have a, th- th- I get a respect from those guys and like my opinion about that. Because you produce stuff too, as well. Yes, but I think, but it's also the other way. It's like if these guys think it's cool yeah. and I'm hung up on it, like maybe I'm just hung up on to it. Involved, right. To involve, to step back, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and like if there's something that's really like, no, you guys are crazy. This has got to be that way. Um, it doesn't. It hasn't needed to come to that so it's like we're all pretty much on the same page and like kind of you know you guys are in the creative process you know like shit you know some like line or some little aspect could be like oh man this is the difference between you know <laughs> everything like this could mean everything if this I could do it better i swear it yeah and and you get hung up on that thing and then when the record's finally finished you just totally don't remember what that thing was yeah. mm-hmm. And it's actually with something else that you're pissed off at or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, you have to live with once. It's yeah. Out. In the case of this record, there was a couple of things which, even towards the end, I was just like, ah, I think that I would have done this this way. Um, but I, I'm fine with it. It's not if people don't like the record because of that, then fuck them. You know, like mm-hmm. I, it, it's just the weird world we live in. Yeah. And then I don't remember any of those things. And now the record sounds perfect to me. I mm-hmm. feel that way about like probably you know all the really great ones that I've that I've done. You yeah. Know? You have you know. such a sick resume, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty. It's fucking Thank crazy, you. man. I mean. Thank you. I mean, you should. It's. I'm. I'm sure you're proud of it. You know what I mean. Mm. I'm grateful. Like it's yeah. just. It's just. Because you're just doing. I mean, you guys do it too. Like you have like your albums or your work that's great, and the fact that it came out great is like, you guys just worked at it, did it. And fucking stuck with it, and then it came out, and then all of a sudden, like, damn, this is a cool thing. But it's yeah. just like, but you approach everything like that. Some of my stuff, like, I think is great. Other people don't care about it. Uh, mm-hmm. There's some things I think are not that great, but other people like it change their lives. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. It's all just like relative. But um, is there stuff you put out that didn't have uh, the? I don't want to say the reaction, but that wasn't accepted the way you thought it would be, or perceived, or yes. digested, and you're like, what the fuck? They missed it. I don't know. For sure. I mean. It's, I think like, um, the walking concert album, I think is like my best, not my best record, but best lyrics. It's like fucking awesome song structures. Um, I was just fucking writing amazing shit. Uh I think it, no, I mean, (laughs) I hope, I mean, you guys know me, so I'm not trying to be, I'm not, I, I I don't, I won't. No, it's not like that. It's just like me with myself. Like other people, obviously the point I'm bringing up is other people (laughs) did not agree with me. <laughs> so yeah. so I'm I'm not deluded in that. <laughs> no, but, I know. but I think as as a as a I think it's just because people are into me for certain things, mm. you know what I mean? And I think I've challenged that in mm. a lot of ways. But um, you know, some things are just like, okay, cool, we're psyched for you that you're into that, but we're not yeah. following you there. And uh but that's part of of doing it. And I'm so happy that um all the experience that comes from that is like still in me and uh and I, you know, and yeah. so that, that kind of is cool in the end. Anyway, I, I got I got a, I got a text from Tim Armstrong. I told him I was gonna have him on the podcast. And oh, cool. He's like, I love that. Oh, he, Walter is so t- rad. Walter is so talented. Much respect. Yeah, and right back at him. Because with Tim saying that to me, it's like I consider you like my East Coast Tim Armstrong in a sense mm. because East for Coast, the West Coast, because nice. because well, I love Tim's writing. Mm-hmm. He produces, you know, uh, Pink, uh, Jimmy Cliff. Transplants, all that stuff, yeah. different projects, and then you're the East Coast guy. I was done a million th- mm-hmm. other same thing. You know what yeah. I mean? It's uh, awesome. It's, We're both uh, from the same world in a sense. We've you know? been been very lucky. Like I know Tim was uh, up at Gilman Street, and like yeah. 
just like hanging out, going to the shows and just had like an, a, an ear and, and a drive for music. And, mm-hmm. um, so the fact that like a little place like Gilman street could like cre- carry him on this whole journey of, of his life is, is, is pretty awesome. Not that it was Gilman street, it was him, yeah, but Operation you know, Ivy, but, that, yeah. but finding that community and that sort of audience, you know, which I was lucky to find in New York, you know, like I found an audience where like, you know, through through the GB or being in Warzone or Youth Today, we're like just that to was name a few. Yeah, just name a few. <laughs> off, you know, I don't know. Those are the first names that came to mind. No, I love those names. Um, <laughs> but that, uh, you know, I, before I was into hardcore, I was into like. Uh, you know, U2 or The Smiths yeah. or R.E.M. or, you know, these bands that were really big that were playing like Radio City Music Hall yeah. or even Madison Square Garden. But like once I got into hardcore, it's like CBGB's is Madison Square Garden. Like that's 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 the audience that I want to funnel my energy into, which is yeah. is really not smart commercially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the the upside of that is that like it's such a magical thing that just keeps fucking sure, keeps yeah. keeps that. germinating and uh, y- you know uh i'm gonna aim all of my talents at something that's not popular yeah that's so <laughs> it's kind of crazy you right say that. yeah, when, yeah. I, when i think about so the music that influenced me like a lot of stuff early on like Judas Priest or mm-hmm. ACDC. They right. were playing stadiums yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but when hardcore did come in, I was like, CBGBs. Yeah. That's where we That's have where to play. That's the spot. It's because like the people Madison were... Square Garden kind of lost. I was like, with Kiss, I was like, oh man, that's yeah. the place. But yeah. then it was like, CBGBs. It's... And it seems so unreal. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, how? what am I going to do? Like, wear these crazy outfits and like, get really good at guitar and like <laughs> play a fucking lame like sh- battle of the bands until I get discovered. Like, but, it, but it's like, interesting I, that it's like when you're that young, you're like, okay, it's like, no, that's not gonna happen. No, but you know, as time goes on, you start to see other bands, you run yeah. other musicians who uh-huh. are getting better at their craft. Yes, true. I it, mean, that had a big influence. It's like, man, maybe it's good to practice. Yes, and, and get like I have so much like. Seeing those people that were at our level that weren't the greatest musicians get better yeah. really had an influence on me. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was like, shit, I, I, I need to step up my game. Yeah. Like, this is so cool to see this person transform. Yes. And I love that transformation. Yeah. It was so like, you know, it was, it was just really, really nice to be around. It's For like, sure. wow, wow. Yeah. But it still is. Still yeah, is. no, absolutely. Yeah. But I saw that with you, you know, yeah. I mean, there was this transformation that was like, always like, man. Really going outside of the box. Really, totally. again, uh. again, again, again. And it was like, that's, you know, the life of an artist, of a yeah. musician. It's like, I think that's a big goal, you know, when you yeah. become a musician. It yeah. makes it interesting, you know. You like get sure. the longest running contract probably with Island Records ever had. You were on there for, it seemed like forever you on there. It's me and Elton John. Mm. Yeah, I just for made that re- up. I just made that up. <laughs> no, but, but you were uh, on for a long time, though. But yeah, I was on they for a long time. all your projects, it seemed. They did, they did. I mean, I think that it kind of... um like to find myself uh supported for all these years i mean i'm you know i'm doing the work you know yeah, like i'm i'm into it but um i just feel very very lucky and blessed and just like to be where i was at the time that i was at and to be with the people that i was with you know like in in whether it was in like hardcore with like you know being in gb and like the r vibe and um you know with ray in youth today ray capo and like his like whole charisma and yeah. like learning from him and um you know into like you know being inspired by people like say like you know i know it's someone that you know we all respect like Ian mckay like yep. taking like you know minor threat and basically writing the whole you know with a few other bands i would put include in there but basically yeah. writing the formula for hardcore and DIY and all that kind of stuff. And then reinventing that, you know, marginally with embrace, I think, but then especially with Fugazi, uh, just taking like the whole ethos and like, and the musicality and what you can do with this music, but yet still remain appealing on a hardcore level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, how far afield you could go. (laughs) Like, like you would be to me, I, I was just like, and you know, and then it mixed with other kinds of music, like shoegaze music from England, and all, yeah. all uh, you know, where people are just like taking, 
or the Smiths, like Morrissey's lyrics, you know, like where people are going out on these like far limbs and like, how can you bust out of the, um, the formula that works well. Like I think of like hardcore is like kind of like cabinet building. Like you, you, you they're, they're solid, they're functional. It's yeah. like your, your band is like what you put in the cabinets, but basically they're cabinets, they're rectangles and squares and there's some diagonal ones too. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, <laughs> and that's really what it is. Um, but what, when you, um, you know, Fugazi is just doing some awesome next level shit. They're next building level. really outside the cabinet, yeah. but you can hear you the know. Fugazi in quicksand, but, Except you guys had way harder bouncier breakdowns. Yeah, we were more. We're from you know, it's like, indicative of New York. Yeah, we're, we're coming yeah, from New York. Like, yeah. I mean, we we were writing for the mosh pit still. Right. Yeah. It's you crazy. know what I mean? Even though it's like not like as like aggressive necessarily yeah. than a lot of like what you would associate with like New York, like you know, mosh pit yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> but that's what was happening. You know what I mean? And we we were. We, we were looking to go there but you know that just just didn't stop there you know even as soon as we accomplished that i was into doing something else so yeah. it's just like how does and then i can return to stuff you know like you asked you me about bored? doing hardcore yeah um like doing civ album for example is like returning Damn you returning to that <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> now we're going to talk about that yeah which that, album the first one yeah you know, okay, yeah definitely yeah. the first album yeah. i was just saying like you Incredible brought album. you brought my dreams up walter and then you destroyed them oh which and one? it was like a roller coaster ride of the music like i'm actually where i'm at i am you know i have a, a lot of a thanks to give to you because uh, there's like ups and downs that you brought mm -hmm. into my life that mm. you may not have known but oh it's nice yeah man. yeah especially with like crisis records when you started that yeah it was a subsidiary of revelation yes. and that signed uh outface my first like mm -hmm. wow real I, didn't band. That. I didn't know that such a good band came to new york to record with Don Fury, yeah. which was like a dream come true. You put that legendary. all together. Yeah. Legendary Don yeah. Fury. I was just like, oh my God. And that's when he had his, his uh, that was pre-ADAT too, I think. Yes. So it's a better sounding recording. Oh man. So that was like a life-changing experience. Yeah. I was like, this is incredible. Yeah, doing it. Ended up like moving to New York with like, after doing that whole process a little bit later with Charlie. Yeah. And then you goddamn wrote that goddamn Civ album. Yeah. And then Charlie was gone. Sammy oh. was gone. <laughs> they left the band that we were playing. We had a band together, Overfiend. And that, you know what? I wasn't mad. I was yeah. like, You were stoked for your boy. I'm sorry, dude. I was stoked for them. And that I was just like, mm, uh, all right, that's cool. But I, I mean, I, I didn't blame them. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is an opportunity. Yeah. The songs are great. Yeah. You guys are going to tour. You're going to do yeah. everything. And I was just like, and she blew damn. Up, damn. But it personal. pushed me harder yeah. you know, to really like stay with you know music and yeah. to create another band out of And look where you're at now, separate tour, right, bro. Right, right. So it, it all was, it was super important, like those aspects of like really like, oh my God. So when you come to think of it, I should be saying you're welcome then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we had this talk. This is true. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of when my, my, my band was on hiatus and I got my brother an audition for Julie Lewis and the Licks and then he got the gig and she took him away for nine years. <laughs> That was my fault. I love right, Juliet. Right. I love oh, the you, you, you got uh, him the audition. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, Juliet listen. gave her the music. Then Todd stood in front of her at her house with a boombox playing the song, singing him in front of her. Playing he was like, that's it. That's my guy. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, those guys are gone. I was like, oh, <laughs> all, right, all right. We did like one show. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to no, be magical. That was good. Over, over feed over was feed. sick. Yeah, it was and good. And you were stoked about it. I was, yeah. I guess I didn't see it in those terms. I, I uh, And I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm glad you finally talked about. So had it. I had I thought about it that way, so that's not fair to Derek. We can't do this. It's, it's all good. He just man. moved here. I was so happy to see Sim do so well. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Fun, man. it was awesome. great, dude. And it was really fun because the the songs, you know, were it was fun and poppy. Yeah. Like where I was doing, like Quicksand was getting like more heady and kind of like jagged. So it was really fun to step into something else that was fun and like such a great squad of people Absolutely, so, so yeah. we we're just like you know <laughs> just it was it's very it was much more like light and fun in that that regard so then you know that that's just kind of like the cool thing about you know so you asked me if i could write hardcore stuff like that yeah. under those circumstances i yeah, could that was do a good example i was you just in the right i was right. just in the right headspace at right. that time so um yeah 
Uh, I think when it comes, you know, like it comes. But uh, you know, the 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 cool thing about hardcore is, is just like, dude, just get pick up a guitar, make a box, and then make a second box. Yeah. Make the third thing go slower, and then you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the lyrics are important. The melody. But the too. lyrics are important. You know what I mean? If, if they're not fucking like clever, at least you got to sing them with heart. And if you yeah. sing them with heart, that's really that's the most important thing yeah. even if they are clever you have to like yeah, deliver absolutely. it with uh, 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 uh with the the feeling of like the kid on the in the audience is like one step below you feels that they could be you and could 100%. do it you know and mm -hmm. and that's like it's not a trick it's just you drew in it or you're not yeah, you that could have been the to the sip record could have been set your goals could have been the second gb record if it was called that yeah, I mean that was kind of like the thinking of it, but I mean I think you know if G I mean? if GB if it was called Gorilla Biscuits, I don't think I think it would have been you know even then, I think people would have, would have received it differently because yeah. you're fucking with something that people feel ownership over, like mm. you know what I mean. So it's like can't wait one minute more is fucking fun, but, but so it's also yeah. really funny and silly. But so it starts today though. It's got yeah, the poppy it is. Vibe. It's kind of basically the same song in a way. It's kind of a can, uh -oh. classic can opener. <laughs> situation <laughs> is it but, dun, 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 but you dun, dun, told me early on i remember what? you telling me you're like oh you know with quicksand there was certain part of like in the very beginning because i was a roadie uh -huh. for you guys on the you, classic on tour the classic dude. tour yeah that was reach you know was mentioned in kevin's kevin's uh thing yeah kevin's documentary yeah that was an epic That's journey kevin. that was like homer yeah. like uh the iliad or something it was it, like an epic journey <laughs> it was an epic journey i was yeah. a roadie yeah you asked charlie to come and uh to play guitar yeah and i remember we we're talking about i can't remember which quicksand song but it's down on backside uh dun, 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 oh mission a mission yeah and you're like that idea you're like it came from bob dylan yeah, and I and then oh, when yeah. you showed me, I was like, "Oh, right." So Damn. anytime I hear Bob Dylan, that song that he does, yeah, um, I'm like, "And he's on the fleet foot back shit, even yeah. on the beach, the subterranean wow. homesick blues." And I was like, "That's yeah. sick." I was this like, dude. "That's." I was like, "Yo, that's <laughs> so cool how you flipped that." Yeah, and it always stuck in my head. I was like, "That's you know, that's what we're talking about like music having an influence. It's always taking from whatever yeah, too. Exactly, it always happens. Yeah, you can always find that. And I thought that was really cool, especially back then. I was like, "Damn, this is on some another level shit." But that whole vibe, but going out to like Canada, like, and, I could still like Bob Dylan and be punk. I, I mean, Bob right, Dylan's that, doing yeah, yeah, you know right, what I'm right, yeah, this yeah. Like hardcore yes. bands, he's listening. To Bob, it just opened my mind to listen to more different styles of yeah music, yeah you know? i mean bob dylan is punk i mean yeah, he absolutely he was singing about like social unrest and like addressing it right. like in a very head-on way and uh on his own terms yep. by on his own steam yeah yeah so that's like punk as fuck totally you know and then punk, when people yeah. then when people like accepted him and were like oh tell us what to do bob he <laughs> right. fucking took a bunch of uh, drugs and fucking wrote like sick records that <laughs> that people were then pissed off at wow and he didn't give a shit then either so punk. he's like ray capo and johnny rotten at the same time you know what mm -hmm. i mean like or or you know, like he, he, there's pieces of that. He, he's very punk. But I was thinking also like that kind of cadence, you know, at that yes. time. I mean, we were listening to so much hip hop at that time too. Oh, sure. Like right. basically, like Public Enemy was just like religiously oh, okay. like everywhere all the time in any group of friends. Yeah. True. It's just like it's like there was like probably like eight to ten hip hop records at that time that like right. any average person would know every word to every song. Just there be rock. Very, very yeah, true. because yeah. it was just that's what was. You know, that's what was lyrics are just like so good, you so know I mean? good and powerful, powerful, and so we're just and kind of like and you're Jesus. just like soaking that up too. So like I think especially in that that um you know all the all anyone in our crew at that time was yeah. was probably picking up on that as well. Yeah, yeah, but I remember like first time hearing when I lived in GB house in Queens with you guys was hearing like the Sugar Cubes for the first time. Mm. Oh, uh, right. Meet his murder, Smith yeah. playing mm -hmm. your bedroom, mm -hmm. Bjork. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe Shaky stuff. Cubes was first of that. Yeah, I Love. was always interested in in. Uh, it's funny, like hardcore, is so goddamn like defining in a way. Well, to me, like I mean, I shouldn't say goddamn. It's fine. It's cool, but um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like you're into this hardcore thing for this like period of time, and I think some people are just like massively into it for mm -hmm. sure, and just like that's what they do: eat breakfast, hardcore, yeah. lunch, hardcore, smoothie in the afternoon, hardcore. Um, like, Hardcore smoothie. yeah, 
<laughs> late night, late night snack, <laughs> hardcore. Um, but you know, like you're in this, this, this thing, like so intensely for me, it was probably like a year and a half of just like, I'm not interested in any other kind of music or any kind of lifestyle or anything that doesn't help me in my quest to know everything about hardcore and punk. Wow. I don't care. I, I don't care that. about Echo and the Bunny Man. Right. I don't, I don't <laughs> right. think that's cool. Yeah, I'm blinders. not interested. <laughs> yeah. The blinders. Are yeah. Blinders. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in indie rock. I don't care about it. Like I'm just into this. And then at a certain point I went like, okay, I think I've exhausted my, my brain <laughs> on this and now I'm back open to other shit and, wow. um, and you know, and then stuff like sugar cubes comes in and that, that, uh, you know, and I was into the Smiths and stuff like it before hardcore. So I maybe like put it on the, on the back burner, but yeah. uh, right, that, right. that's always, I mean, I think we're all very eclectic music listeners, you sure. know, no, no, like all the yeah. three of us and, right. and that, Again, it's like drawing into the music form that we create is about like a certain ethos more than it is about style or technique. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about the feeling mm -hmm. of it and the, and the community that you're that you're mm -hmm. vibing with. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I really I heard you too with you in the house, but then when I really got into it was when Kevin Seconds grew his hair long and he was yeah. thanking them on the record. Yeah, and Joshua mm -hmm. Tree had come out. Wow, and I was like, holy fuck, this is my favorite band. How and old were you around? Was that? Teenage, right? When seven, seven that'd have been like eighty eight or something like that. Eighty seven. Yeah, I moved to New York in eighty eight, so maybe yeah. eighty seven. He grew his hair when I saw him at CB's with long hair. Then he was thanking you two, and I was like, you two, they're on the radio. I checked him out, and I fell in love with you two because of a hardcore band. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's cool. And By then, what you remember? What album of you two? Or that, well, it was Joshua Tree. It would have been Joshua Tree. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're but my favorite dude grew his hair out. He's like wearing a flannel and like yeah, wow. it was just beautiful. I was like, wow, I love you two. And then I found oh, other things because of them. You know, yeah. I just remember really at that, that time, like I was really like you were saying, like hardcore Me blinders too, were yeah. on. But I still loved you too, even though okay. I wasn't telling a lot of people. No. Guilty pleasure. And, and I was like, Joshua Tree, I was already like, no sellout. Yeah. But I was already like, because I was a huge fan, like in junior high school. Unforgettable oh, Fire, boy, that record that. is fucking insane. That was like, war. War God. is amazing. October, uh, like, it's, it's just, they were on a tear. They were the first album's great. I, I think I yeah. I mean, it's just like I think we were saying before. It's like once they hit Joshua Tree, it's just like everyone's into them. Yeah, oh, not anymore. Yeah, and right. so it's like not like. as you're just kind of like you're into you two. Oh I yeah, what else are you into? Now. Like but when pizza. I, but when you know, I hear it's just that like, album now, it's like it's incredible. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a rebirth to me. I'm like, man, they were on some shit. They were. But I was on that like. Mm. You know, like I'm, I'm kind of done right now. I it's just like not to... edgy at yeah. that point. Edge. Um, uh, <laughs> I saw before, right, like maybe a, f a Japan, few months. Yeah, I was. I went to two uh, yeah, shows in uh, yeah. with uh, me and Atiba went to Japan. We he saw because he's story. tight with um Edge. with Edge. Edge. So <laughs> it was the sixth. We went to see them <laughs> do the entire uh, un uh, unforgettable, not unforgettable, Joshua, 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 Joshua album. Yeah. Uh, the whole album, uh, two nights, and they played some different songs around it too. It was fucking incredible in the Tokyo Dome or whatever which is like Damn. massive it's bigger than Madison Square Garden and just it was fucking sick but the coolest thing is just hanging out with the edge so like Dude. we're hanging out at the Beat Cafe and swinging it back to Queensland hanging out at this uh, this this really cool bar and you you guys have probably been there maybe I don't know but Beat Cafe you know um, uh, Kataman mm. okay yeah. anyway great guy in, okay. in Tokyo and uh, so after the U2 show he plays fucking 30,000 people or whatever we're chilling with the edge at fucking beat cafe which is about as big as your kitchen maybe a little wow. bit bigger and just like talking about punk drinking beers wow. and uh and then atiba fucking puts on quicksand and we're just like i'm sitting there rocking to quicksand with the edge oh, who is like wow. one of my guitar heroes of all time i mean my yeah. playing is so similar to him um and he's just like rocking to quicksand and just saying like I mean, just really cool, like compliments, you know. Like, oh, I mean, man. he's on the spot to like it, but right. did you um, know Atiba was going to put you guys on like that? Put music yeah, on? I mean, he didn't okay. like. He said he didn't like. You know, it's his friend, play. so yeah, he doesn't yeah, yeah. have control of what Edge is going to do. But, um, <laughs> but he put it out there, and Edge is fucking so cool and so wow. like chill and. Um, yeah, just you couldn't. It's always tricky to meet your heroes, so you could, yeah. you could catch them on a bad day. Oh, totally, man. And, exactly. And yeah. uh, so that's a little tricky, but. Dude was so down to earth and was just like everything that you'd hope you would. And it was just so interesting talking to him about. Um, I mean, Does he know I about guess punk? I think it's high end punishment that I was giving him. 
<laughs> well, you're hanging out, drinking, talking. Would, it yeah. It's casual. It's it, oh, it probably like head. just very good punishment, like nice punishment. Right. Uh, you know, and um, but he was telling me, you know, that like it was his idea to work with um, with Eno. Brian Eno, who had wow. worked, had done the Bowie records, and uh, you know, uh, up up until you know when they worked with him on Unfor- Unforgettable Fire. Yeah. So, and he was thinking the edge is like, dude, there's no way Eno's going to work with with us because he. he he he's not uh you know he suggested it to bono and he's like there's no way that he you know he probably won't say yes because we're not cool you know this is you too damn and bono's like fuck that dude he's gonna work with us you kidding me (laughs) and bono's just like call him and he's on and he fucking made it happen so it's like such a cool look into their dynamic like they're a they're bros the edge has cool ideas and bono's got fucking confidence yeah. Like, so cool, man. And he's right, Damn. dude. They're fucking you too, dude. Yeah. You think Eno's gonna pass it up? Oh no, they're not cool enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> what was he saying about he grew up he was about punk rock and stuff? He was into what I remember him telling me he was into was um yeah, he was into punk. He was into like um what was the band uh Suspect device. You don't believe her. I don't oh believe God. her. Ba-da, 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 ba-da. Uh, from Suspect Ireland, they're uh, Suspect device. Um, they still play. Oh God! The single they in still Chicago. Play? The single's in Chicago. Yeah, you're oh killing me. Oh my God! I know. I, I'm so Jesus. sorry. I'm so sorry. We're just put up. Su- just put up. Suspect device. Yeah, we're such poses, we are super poses. People are this probably big... screaming in their head. Right. Like, it's. I know this. Yes. Suspect. It's so annoying. We're we're getting punk rock bands hang out. I can't believe I can't think of this. Oh my God. When I'm up against a wall. No, that's not them. No, no. <laughs> Suspect Device. It's the name of the, si- the single. Let's dip their fingers. It's, oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. But I to can't... be fair, that's a kind of a tricky name. Yeah. It has fingers in it. No, but still. Who's thinking of that? They're still Suspect playing. Device. Yeah, we did a festival where they played as well in Norway like two years they're ago. They're incredible. Uh, and even though I couldn't think of their name. And uh, <laughs> I'm reading the lyrics right now. And just funny. cool. The Edge was into them. And the Undertones, of course, who mm-hmm. were also from Ireland. And... Uh, he was into uh, Cabaret Voltaire, I think, was wow. another one, okay. which is, uh, you know, some of this kind of stuff that was coming, or, or was it, uh, some of the stuff that's coming from England at that time, which was sort of, um, you know, kind of like a little bit Smith's era, but, yeah. uh, you know, kind of dancey, and uh, yeah, he's just a, He's just, he, it's just like anybody. People are people, and yeah. it's just nice for him to sh- to show that. And that you two are one of my favorite bands. So that it's was amazing, that was man. a really it's magical. Amazing. Like, you know, sometimes where you're just like, life is cool. Like, yeah, yeah. You're in I Japan. Was, hanging I'm in out, Japan, watching, like, Jesus, hanging out with the Edge. edge. Talk, he's rocking on my music. It's just like surreal, dude, man. Yeah, it's kind of a surreal moment. And uh, great, grateful to, to to the Edge and for Atiba for for making that happen. That, I, I love that story. I can't when imagine he, yeah. that. Like. And they're still homies. So Tiba said that he, that Edge came over and like he did. He told us that story. Yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Came over like not too long ago for dinner, and uh, <laughs> so that's dope. I heard. I heard. So a, I heard a rumor that like Joey Ramone was tight with Bono, and he was at his bedside when he was in the hospital. I it believe. Was, yeah. It was wow. rumors that Bono was going to buy CBs, or he paid for Joey's the hospital bills. Don't quote me, everybody. Or they, or he was listening to the new U2 song that Bono was playing for him at his bedside. Heard all wow. kinds of things. <laughs> I believe the last one, maybe. Yeah. Right. I don't think why if Joey Ramone doesn't have money to pay, God, like what? Who are the yeah. punks? If, yeah. if, if Joey Ramone's like dies, can't pay for his hospital bills, he must be like fuck punk rock. I, I hate bet all he you. couldn't pay for. It. I heard yeah. that Bono offered just to pay for. Oh, okay. Because okay. he was okay. in the hospital live. for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. These are all rumors. Cool. People aren't they true or not? They sound awesome. If that's I could see Aunt Bono doing that for sure. Like right. he's he's got it. I think Bono's like crazy rich like no, he, not just from music other, but from like other no, stuff no no there's no doubt he's already into real estate and a lot of other things yeah no, wow. there's, for sure 100 yeah sure, no i mean that. it makes sense he's been doing it for yeah. a really long time in brazil he he comes they play a lot in mm. brazil they're massive south america in yeah. general but i know he's done some i'm sure like real estate type of stuff. course yeah i heard he bought like apple stock at a really good time something like that mm-hmm. like something even just like mundane was, like that because wow. he probably knew yeah. the dude like uh steve jobs <laughs> oh how's it going steve <laughs> yeah maybe May- i mean they did have of that thing where they forced you to on your phone yes who else gets to oh, do that yeah. you remember that right? maybe that was the payoff yeah I like that their was, record though. I'm not going to front. All right. Okay. I do like the U2 record. I think it's out. a cool record, but I think it was a blunder on their part to like force it on people's phones. Mm. I think the intention was good. Yeah. But it's like basically sending something to someone's house and they can't get rid of it. Mm-hmm. It's like your house. Yeah. Mm. You know, your iPod. Yeah. 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 Without your consent. Without your consent. <laughs> so even though it's a nice gift, it's like it's like you gave someone some sort of like piece of like a cool 
sculpture or something a vase but you can't ever get rid mm -hmm. of the vase you didn't ask for it completely on a different subject yeah. uh since i am from ohio and, yeah uh, i think that connection you had with cleveland yes was because of your toledo connection yep and, and columbus living in columbus yeah but living there for what was it a year or school year i Maybe lived in uh two years i lived nice in segue yeah that was great um because <laughs> i always I, I just wanted to ask it's like what came you know you it described it on the last podcast as being like thanks for doing magical your homework, thanks magical homework. Yeah. moment yes i and love I was it like, what? i was like what i imagine you being high school being the new york kid oh like, yeah it was oh, cool yeah. culture shock no? so what, what was it like that i mean because I know it is... I loved it. I mean, it's like, just... Like, what did you love about it? You know? I loved the... Um, Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think what I loved about it is just like, the John Hughes-ness of it. Right, Ooh. yes. In, yes. in New York, there's like there's no fucking football team. There's oh, no... Right, right. There's none of that stuff going on. There's no right. cheerleaders. You're right, right, uh, right. There's no... Um, parties at people's houses there's no one's toilet That's papering true. anybody's house there's none of that crap so like going to ohio and kind of stepping into that world was a thrill and i was like the kind of like kevin bacon right character <laughs> because i have the new york accent wow. and so i'm sort of like people kind of want to know me some people don't like me of and course. um yeah. And basically, I made great friends and had super. I'm I'm still friends with uh, with a couple of people that. to this day. Really, one friend uh, in particular. But you know, there's people that I can reach out to in that. In and I only lived there for a year. Yeah. Um, but this, I was having so much fun, and I was with my dad, and my you know my mom was in New York, so I was living with my dad. I just don't think my dad really got it. So I was just getting fucking hammered, like <laughs> raiding. <laughs> Throwing parties at the house, <laughs> failing. I failed like every subject. Were you 17, 16, 17? I was 15. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 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 I was crushing the liquor cabinet, like marking <laughs> it all the time. Like just any sort of like. Rebel. I was just doing what kids were doing. Of course. And, uh, and uh, so I failed out all the classes. So then I had to move back to New York, Damn. which much like, you know, where you hit some sort of like, you know, roadblock where like, you know, that got shut down. Then, I, and my my mom in that time had moved from Rockaway to Astoria, which is a, a part of different part of Queens. Oh yeah, Astoria, Astoria Queens. Queens. So I moved back to Astoria, and I didn't know anybody in Astoria. So I, I moved from Ohio, like fucking footloose. Now I'm <laughs> fucking stuck in Astoria with like nothing happening. It's dead. Yeah. I don't know anybody, but I see a kraut sticker on a uh, on a no parking sign. I'm like, why the fuck would there be a kraut sticker? on a no parking sign unless kraut are from here mm -hmm. or people who like kraut live here. Right. Wow. And it was eventually that little sliver of hope that I thought I might find my people. Like maybe I can finally like find my punk people. Cause mm -hmm. in Ohio it was there. I had friends that were into punk like necros and, yeah. and, and knew about them cause they were from Toledo. Yeah. yeah. So I you never knew that too recently. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And meat man, you know, cause meat yes. man are from Detroit or Lansing. And so you would, I was aware of those bands. Um, like that Midwest hardcore vibe, but you know, we were just doing regular high school kid stuff. We weren't going to like driving to Michigan to right. see some fucking fucked St. up Andrews, show. At, yeah. yeah the, with psychos from right. there. Psycho, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, but I think that's, you know, I can feel that you guys, when I say you guys like gorilla biscuits, you did today, uh -huh. whenever you would come through Cleveland, it was just like really special for you guys because you could, kind of dive into that whole suburban yeah. like life that you'd never had. Like you guys didn't yeah. have driver's licenses. Yes. I thought it was like fast. Oh, we love like, that. And you're like, oh my God, like we could go to like this person's house. Yeah. And like chill and mm -hmm. have that vibe. And um yeah, that I always thought that was really I was like, yeah, but you guys are from the fucking city. You but know to and be I kept, fair, Cleveland is fucking awesome. And yeah, the, and the crew awesome of people that we were hanging out with, like your friend group and that there's a reason why we're still you know, right. tie it to this day is because there was something there and the people were cool and knew how to have fun and we loved it. it you know what's awesome. incredible? You're the second person ever on the podcast to say Cleveland was awesome besides Derek. <laughs> <laughs> people always try to shit on Cleveland. I know, on the dude. Yes. I know they do, but they I I'll vouch. I'll vouch for you, dude. Cleveland is fucking awesome. It's got a lot of vibe. It's like, um, you know, I really love a lot of the towns, like, kind of, I would say, no offense, but a little bit beat up towns, you know, like Buffalo, yeah, Cleveland, Buffalo. Detroit, 
um, those towns where they're, you know, even like, I guess I wouldn't go to Columbus as much, but like those towns, like I have such an affinity for them because there's like such greatness. You can see like the architecture mm. has a grandeur mm-hmm. about it that uh, uh, there was a time when this shit, when Cleveland was like, we've got this, bro. Yeah. Like we're, <laughs> we're killing it. So right. You describe it and it's such a incredible way that's very very true detroit it's very true detroit too yeah, and you, have, yeah. yeah but detroit i think has fallen so visibly hard it's like gnarly cleveland is like also probably is taken but it's not as obvious people don't talk about right. it. it's not number one on the list of mm-hmm. like most fucked up places but you see that grandeur to it and that um the you know just like there's cool people there mm-hmm. and, yeah. and in that realm i mean when you think about like new york lower east side in a way like it's from like that classic era like you know like being in front of CBs and everything's fucked up or even that kind of yeah. Jim Jarmusch era of New York yes, where it's like depopulated yeah. and you know people Jim are Jarmusch great reference to uh, Ohio and Cleveland yeah he's from there yeah oh shit oh you didn't that's know that's killer no I didn't know yeah, that yeah who's from the there? Mo- Jim Jarmusch one of my favorite directors from Cleveland when you look at his movies uh, like uh, I just watched Down by Law Down by Law it's not a good example but before that Stranger All, than Paradise. Stranger than Paradise yeah. takes place in Cleveland. Yeah. There's a reason because he oh, knows shit. that whole scenario. That's in Cleveland? Interesting. Fuck. Yeah, it's in Cleveland. Yeah. So I'm thinking of that depopulated New York City. Um, like in that depopulated fucked upness of all the bricks strewn and, yeah. you know, uh, garbage cans on fire and all that kind of mm-hmm. crap. Yeah. Like is where like great shit pops out of yeah, you true. know what i mean and so you know you might live in a, in a nice part of brooklyn but you go into to lower east side and like you know soak up some of this Gritty coolness yeah and, and yeah. then you got fucking you know you, mm-hmm. you've got something else so i i always love cleveland um and i love ohio i, I think it's cool like i've got from that experience i have a taste for the midwest you know right. what i mean yeah. like i under i get right the midwest which is it's just cool yeah and then living in berlin how long are you berlin oh, for? Yeah. I lived in Berlin for around three years. Wow. And I mean, you know, you guys. I love it, it there, We've man. all spent yeah. so much time in Germany. I mean, it's probably like we've, we've all <laughs> lived in Berlin. Yes, Herr Schreifos. Yes, yes Schreifos. Yeah. Herr Schreifos, this is very true. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's very New York vibe. I love Berlin, man. Great people, <laughs> uh-huh. food. It's oh, yeah. a good vibe. There, I mean, man. Berlin in particular. I mean, Germany in general, I, I think Germany's great. I just have had so many good times in like every city no there but you know over the over the years but berlin in particular i think has like uh it has a cosmopolitan aspect and just like ghosts and and history yeah and just soul to it you know because i mean obviously like so many people have been like killed and so much destruction about the world to grind yeah. it in in this one place and you see like the division between east and west and uh that it especially the time that i lived there i mean it was not you know like it's not the time to live there, but yeah. but now it's like obviously more gentrified and tightened up. But you could move to Berlin, have a cool apartment, and make your music, and just be that. Yeah, and and and, and you can't do that in cities like New York or it's Los hard. Angeles. It's hard. You, you know, you gotta yeah. you gotta hustle a lot to live just like normal. And then the more you hustle, the less you have for your for your art. And Absolutely. Yeah. What were you, yeah, that's what were you working point. on the time you lived there? What, what, yeah, what band were you question. in um, yeah. I was doing, um, I think I had put out the walking concert record at that time. So the other, the other side of it is that I was writing a lot of songs, but I was more like just touring around playing acoustic shows. Nice. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I, I wasn't, that. I don't know if I was terribly prolific because the other side about Berlin is like in those kind of atmospheres is that you don't have any real, you don't have to do shit because your rent's paid. <laughs> everything's chill. So True. that's the other opposite side Free of it. Free medical insurance. Yeah. That. Everything's hooked up. So you're just yeah. like, ah, I think I'll just kind of hang out. Um, <laughs> but um, I have a nice balcony. Just have some coffee. Right. Chill. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. kind of ponder life. Um, <laughs> you know, be that. But uh, I, I really loved uh, playing acoustic shows. I would go out and, uh, you know, I just take the train. I had like an, uh, a, a, a Deutsche Bahn pass. Yeah. And, uh, and so <laughs> it was cheap to just go to like, you know, whatever, Wuppertal, play a gig, fucking, <laughs> you know, take, t- see the town, meet yeah. the people, have a night and uh, go home. And, and that would be like my rent's paid. Cause sick, you know, and do that once a month and wow. having a cool experience like that. It was, it was a very nice time there. And the cool thing was, 
I don't know if, if seeing you guys there, but like my friends that would come, come into town, 36. I'm like the main gig in town. Yeah. Right? Right. Like you come to New York, you got your fucking choice of, of bros that are going to hit you up. You're the main one. To hang. Was the, the Spieder your, your friend of choice? It's such of a course. good friend. Yeah. yeah. Lifelong. Back in Queens when yeah. I first met him. And uh, yeah, your place. Yep. And uh, I was like, this guy is in it for the long haul. He rules. Uh, I love Speeder's Speeder. best, da- David uh, Strempel. He uh, he runs Cortex. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. record Speeder. store out, in uh, in Berlin. And for anybody that's listening that knows hardcore and is in Europe, that's kind of the epicenter of uh, of of punk and hardcore. I mean, uh, you know, from my perspective, it's just so no community doubt. based it's and great, great, people. Uh, yeah. great people, and they're just really just empowering uh the scene and it's just such a cool guy and such an eccentric <laughs> freak i love him it's just like <laughs> peas in a pod boss, oh you're talking about david who has a camouflage yes, yes. oh that's the homie up david yeah. david yeah. strepo yeah. like, um, said I, like that the speeder. yeah Yo, he, he knows every, he knows every kind of camouflage <laughs> yeah. what year it's from oh yeah he breaks down all camo like he's yeah. a camo king he's a you, he's you a camo why they call him the speeder because he speaks speedily he might be listening guys it'd be nice I'm sorry, David. You know I love you, and it's, it's just not even like a, I remember that is kind of how he talks. That's how he sounds. I was like, why? I was like, why? Why do they call you the speeder? And yeah, and he was like, mm, because I'm very fast on the track. That's I'm like very fast speeder. on the on the track. Yes. Running? Yeah. Oh. oh, so Walter's a speeder then? <laughs> yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think speed speaker is what. Oh, we, really? Yeah, really? that's okay. what I that's what I heard. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. But after everyone asks you that, you probably come up with a few different ones. Yeah, I mean, he had like a six pack and like a Playboy, you know, like ah. under his arm, and he was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Who?" Well, is that's a better guy? answer. Who wow. is this guy? And he's like, "Oh, because I'm." Very, I thought it was because he was like he had bars or something, you know, like he was really yeah. serious, like speaking. Wow, he, that might be it. He's uh, <laughs> he's such a cool guy and su- such great. Style yeah. and uh, and he's so creative, super positive, super nice. Super positive. Yeah. Every show, yeah, always there, and, no matter f- what. and funny as fuck. Funny, he, he's 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 the best. Uh, so yeah, living in Berlin, having friends like that, yeah. like right from the jump, I was in with really really good people. Yeah. Uh, you know, my friend Philip Stera, who's like really helped me uh, and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, like, you know, find our place and just like, you know, any problems we have with German, he would help us out and just like introduce us to all these like really cool German indie rock people. Oh. And so I was just meeting all these like really interesting people that were like into punk and into hardcore, but just like into other shit too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> it was really awesome to make these great friends that I still have. And, and, uh, and also, yeah, when my friends would visit, it would be really special because it's like, I'm your guy here. Yeah. I mean, not, not, so cool. you know, not, it's it just because family. you yeah. just aren't that many other people living in Berlin. Right. So even to this day, people will call me sometimes, hey, are you still living in Berlin? Wow. Uh, and uh, so I loved that, you know, because um, yeah, New York, if, if a band comes through, yeah, there's so many other people <laughs> to hang. So, you know, you give them a pound and say, great show or whatever, but it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily going to be a hang, right? Uh, but you know, but that yeah. that was nice. I know that feeling, like, especially yeah. like Sao Paulo. Madball came through. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just like their guy. Yeah. I was like, yes, totally. You, yes, you're that the was guy. So much fun, man. Yeah, like, you're Freddy, the guy. And Hoya, oh my god, we went out and they loved it. You man. show up in the town. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was like, yeah. hell yes. Yeah, so you know the feeling. Yeah, and yeah. When you came before, when you yeah. guys came, when it was like the whole crew. yeah, so we're yeah. gonna see Derek. Yeah. Did so. you uh, did you learn how to speak German? Uh, a fair like about amount that I could talk like to a taxi driver, but like not really. That's a sehr good hash. Right yeah, first. just like basic shit. You know, one of the first um, German words I heard in punk rock was Wiener Schnitzel. Okay, right. Welcome to Descendants. Welcome yeah, to I was like, what is this shit? Like, I know about, what... you're probably Gesundheit was probably your first. Oh, word. Gesundheit. Yeah. 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 God bless you. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Good That's, health. You, yeah. <laughs> health. Yeah. It was cool, when I knew you. And I think what's his face moved over there too from Philadelphia, Patrick. Patrick, Pat. yeah, Pat lives there. Um, although he's been in the states for all COVID. He's back, yeah. He's yeah. in LA too, or something. Yeah, like he's been driving uh, art around. So uh, his apartment's in, I think, vacant. Um, I know I have sound checking all that stuff. But a couple yeah. of questions. My, one more question: Did you write uh, "No More"? Did you write songs of "When Is When Is Alone"? Wow. I wrote the bass part to "No More." Wow, that's a good bass yeah, part. Though. Yeah, that's yeah. That's just the part. Yeah, that's yeah. what you hear. Right? Yeah, so that that song's amazing. I love. I'm so proud of the songs. Like between that and uh, and um, Cats and Dogs, to have yes. been, yeah. been on uh, 
life changing. You know, uh, yeah, no, oh, no, yeah. animal okay. rights and 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 supporting vegetarianism from like an early Dude, early age. One of the you guys got me. Into, you guys got me, me into it. Yeah, my first me tattoo, too. meat is murder. My GB tat. Yeah, like all that. Just writing yeah. those songs. So when you go into youth today and you used to writing almost everything for GB lyric wise. Yeah, I'm sure Ray writes his stuff. Yeah, I mean the cool thing about being in and it, you know it evolved, but I mean the really nice thing about being in youth today is that you know between Ray and Purcell they really had their shit down. Oh, you know, yeah. so yeah. I was learning from them. I wasn't questioning it. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, as we evolved, I mean, although they were very open to, to my kind of participation when it came yeah. up, but yeah, I wrote, I wrote songs for, on that album, uh, keep it up. I think I wrote the music keep for, uh, that's my favorite wild tea record, by the way, choose I mean, to be, I, love choose, choose, choose. Nice. I wrote the music for that one, but I mean, Ray's always making the thing is Ray's such a, an amazing singer. Uh, he, he, he just, you give him some cool music. And he'll just go to town. Right? On yeah, it. yeah. And it's so, so it's really good. Uh, and I wrote on the the last thing we put out. I wrote the music for Disengage, which I think is like wow, my most. Uh, that's probably my, 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 yeah. my best uh, thing that I that I brought to youth today. Yeah, there's something different about from from Break Down the Walls to Awareness Alone. There's a we're, different energy. Man, I, I remember. Don't know. Yeah. We, we're I love back. The just like, yeah, we're back. Yeah, that's so shit. sick. So sick. And then the no the more video, of it, dude, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. I. Remember that very vividly. Like it was like, wow, they really are back. Like this yeah, is it's yeah. refresh. Like oh my god, I can't. It's like Goose, but Carol yeah. Records. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, it could be really corny. We're back. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it, but it's like not. Commercial. No, but it's yeah. It's not. It's like, like real. And yeah. so like when it works, it's like holy shit. I mean, Ray would just like run around the the the, the, Yo, the with a mic, insane. handheld mic, running around this. Chung King studio screaming his fucking head off. Wow. Uh, and just, it's all so raw. You know, if you listen mm-hmm. to it, it's so real. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I remember working in Queens at the uh, practice studio with GB and Youth of Today. Uh, Mark Brad, Mark Bad Trip got me a job there. I remember when Ray first came back from uh, going to India. Mm-hmm. And he was like doing he- he- uh, headstands in the, yeah. in the rehearsal room and all this crazy. I was like, wow, that's some new, <laughs> new level. <laughs> it's a new level. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's just wired like for... You know he's a he's on a quest. Yeah. You know, and he and it's cool. Like I feel lucky that, especially in vegetarianism, yeah, and man. and Head also in just like health in general, just like your relationship to like what you know the sort of like you are what you eat kind of concept, and like taking that in at a time where, you know, maybe a year or two before I'd be like not thinking about that shit at yeah. all. True. He was ahead of the whole and shit, all you man. guys were like working at health food stores. Yeah, we're all working yeah, at health everyone. food stores. Chocolate at Prana. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Surge. Someone yeah. six Alan. hours. Sid yeah. worked. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody was working there. Down yeah. to earth. I remember I was just like, yo, what's the hookups? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're either working Same. at a health food store or you're doing security or bar backing at a at a nightclub. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Those were the two two jobs that were had. Right. Um <laughs> But yeah, I mean I'm I'm grateful for that for for that experience and just yeah. like what it kind of meant for my like long term term mm-hmm. projections and i think that's just like definitely the influence of of uh you know among other people but ray very much instrumental i yeah. think right on yeah and the final song that one of my favorite songs is an open an open letter to the scene you wrote oh, thank you that that still gives me goosebumps mm. it's just a perfect song about rabies it just mm. were you doing that song solo when you were doing your solo stuff in berlin I guess probably that, that would have been a song that i would have been working on yeah. i think at that time uh because i had the music for it um, but I didn't have the lyrics quite down. I just had that, that line or an open letter to the scene. Yeah. And so, uh, I just took a while to like get it, but I thought it was cool cause it is like kind of got a David Bowie kind of feel to it mm. and writing it about like rabies. Who's like from a totally different kind of world yeah. in a yeah. way, uh, to make it more of like, you know, the, the sort of folk hero aspect of, yeah. of him and the folk ar- hero aspect of, you know, a lot of the hardcore people are kind of like characters. Totally. You know what especially I mean? Especially the, the New York scene, bro. Yeah. Especially so many the characters. characters. Like a I would take characters. action figures of half of these dudes, like yeah. at least. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Stigma one would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you know, that's, Rabies was like that and like, I, I you know, I knew him pretty good as as a mm-hmm. as a kid yeah. oh, okay. you know what right. i mean like not I'm, i mean i know people i knew, knew him better were clo- closer to him but so i had that like closeness yet enough distance to to revere him in a certain way but also like appreciate like you know having known him and seen seen yeah. him close so I, it was really cool to like get get that, that yeah you know and it didn't come like right away but right. but uh 
No, it's a beautiful song. Thank you. Man. Thank you. If you had to name like any top inspirations musical wise, it could be mm-hmm. MC or uh, author. Mm-hmm. Author. Yeah. Oh, Arthur. Like, yeah, <laughs> Arthur main, Smilios. You have main yeah. inspirations or you continue to have new inspirations? Uh, go back to there's certain basic to. things that are just my my general style, you know. Like I always feel like I play guitar kind of like between Angus Young and uh, mm. uh, the Edge and probably Ian Mackay. Like that's nice. kind of like my stylistic thing. So I'll try to like branch out of that consciously and like practice or like I work with effects pedals or something like that to yeah. try to break out of that. But you know that's kind of my guitar playing. I think for vocals, you know, definitely Kevin Seconds. Nice. Uh, uh, Bono, mm-hmm. um, Ian McKay, yes. probably a lot of the same, and and a little bit of Bon Scott. Wow. And Jim Morrison, you wow. know, like yeah. those kind of like primal, you know, Bob, I don't know, there's a lot of different guys, but, but you know, those like, I think you kind of form when, when you learn how to make music, you kind of, whoever you were into at that time yeah. are, are going to inform you stylistically throughout. And then so it's up to you to like recognize what those things are and, you know, max them, push them, or like bring other things in to like flirt with them. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but you know, it's all it's all coming from that understanding, like what works. You know, yeah. a lot of the time, and um, and and that's just something that changes over time. But you also have an understanding of like what your basic toolbox looks like. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I, I want to thank you too because when I moved to New York, I was a total just punk rock skateboarder and. I listen to hip hop as well, but then you opened my mind to listen to other types of music, and that mm-hmm. really changed my life. Like, to really loving and embracing pop music and all kinds of stuff that I would never fucked with. Because the so people cool. I, I looked up to and I was living with, they were fucking with them. Like, okay, I'm gonna check it out too. You know, that yeah. was really important to me, man. Oh and man. Then, and then being able to sing on the Start Today record was like, when I look back at <laughs> now, it was a moment in time living with you. Like, oh, come sing backups, go sing gang books, whatever. Then it becomes yeah. this product that's incredibly life changing and inspiring. Yeah. So it meant a lot to me, man. That's so sure. cool, Toby. I'm so glad that we, you know, we've been going through this together this crazy, whole time. Man. It's really fucking cool. It's crazy. I was yeah. in the closet in Queens in the fucking house, and it's <laughs> legend, dude. The closet. <laughs> I lived in Ali L- Cage's closet. I that's the craziest that shit that you. Man, that somehow crazy. there was a deal made. We're like, okay, <laughs> so Alan, your room's pretty cool. Toby's gonna live in the closet, <laughs> and so you're gonna pay like a hundred dollars less. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh my God. It was something like that. Like you might maybe paid one hundred seventy five dollars to sleep in the closet. Still cheap back then, but yeah, we we had weights in that room. Walt, I was doing weights with Alan. He was fucking yeah. yeah. Like and so there was like a time when you went, like that. I don't know how many other places you lived outside of home before that, but like that was my first apartment outside of home. Wow, that might wow. have been mine too. I was on a couple couches when I first moved there. Yeah, Timmy Chunks' couch, and then lived in Arthur's bedroom. It's just like a story <laughs> of Queens. I was like, oh my god, like I stayed there a few nights or mm-hmm. something, and. uh I just remember it just from the song from Murphy's Law. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was, so it's just like popped. I was like, oh yeah, it must You're be here. a magical place. It story is. The story is Queens. great. At that time we were living in Jackson Heights though. By the Burger King. Yes. Yeah, so I had moved, I had, we had moved over to Astoria and uh, from Astoria, but uh, the Jackson Heights, it was like right, it was basically as far f- from where I am as to like that door uh, the, to the BQE, <laughs> my, my room. <laughs> So the BQE is the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, which is basically yes. like the the Fox, most busy yeah. uh, artery of, of New York City. And I, I remember the apartment, like th- that room was in the front uh, by the living room. And I thought, oh, this is dope. I'll have my own room. It's smaller and it's away from everybody. So I'll just kind of have like my own zone over here. Yeah. And then I went, tried to go to sleep that night. And it was just like, ba-dum, ba-dum. Argh! And there was like one of those metal fucking things that they put out there. And it, a truck would hit it and it would just do an ollie. Wow. And uh, oh my God. How long did we live there for? At least a year, right? Yeah, know. probably a year. It was fucking roach infested. We just Dude. like, it was, it got gnarly. I remember Chain of Strength came there, they were bleaching the hair in the bathroom and shit. Yeah. Oh my God. I wish I, we had mad <laughs> Chain of Strength t shirts in our house and like records and stuff like that. Yeah. And at the time, I did not know it. If I had been more prescient, I would have like put them in a nice tight box right. and Ooh. put them in plastic and be like, saved them. Yeah, Dude. chain of strength. Imagine the shirt you had back then. You still had them, bro. Oh crazy. fuck! Did I just keep th- a lot of shit to throw it away. I just thought it was a. No one was ever going to care about it, and b. It would just keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> you never like a, ho- a hoarder. Never. I never thought like, oh my gosh, this is so valuable. Right. One day I'll like. I really want to have this chain of strength shirt. Be nice, so I can wear it when I'm in my forties. Like no. Yeah. <laughs> or thousands of dollars. Yeah, or sell it for like a thousand dollars in the year twenty twenty one. What What about like, vinyl no. like pressings? You kept that stuff. No, stupid. And wow. and I I I hate to say it, but I think people <laughs> fucking would like stay over my house. You know, it's a you know 
maybe people take liberties. I don't know. My records are gone. Liberties. You know, he doesn't care. That's he has. Nice way of he has. Saying it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like paranoid, but no, he might oh, be stuff. right. Though. It's cool. He just kept moving and hold on to it because you moved around a lot. Too. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't mean it's not. I don't know if it's cool. Like someone like Sid, for example, has fucking everything. My brother oh, yeah. has fucking yeah. everything. My brother has like That's had true. like every flyer from like the period of like 1986 to like 1989. Probably all your bands do everything. Everything. That was a good introduction wow. when I moved to New York, like hanging out with your brother a lot, like yeah. learning about the scene and like the yeah. do's and, and don'ts and certain the do's people. And don'ts. Yeah. Certain people Don't talk scene, to that person. Just Watch like, out for that person. See that dude? Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, and then just getting kind of like a history lesson. Yeah, wow. and then also hanging out with like Mother Sarah, who I was playing with out there. She also and had. She a... was like old school. Yeah, like from a completely different scene, and she, I got introduced to her from uh, Blood Clot, John. Okay, and he was like, "Yo, you should get this girl, to Sarah. That's cool. She's, She's a great, great baseball. girl. Yeah." And so I got like a good breakdown from how it all from works, Berlin and yeah, and then in the, ins like, and outs of yeah, the core, ins and outs, just like yo etiquette, yeah, mosh and, and etiquette, certain things that happened, like the change in the scene, you know, yeah. the people coming in, especially from Sarah's point of view because she was coming from that whole like bad brains rehearsal, hanging out uh-huh. there. She Damn. was like, I was there when John got right. stabbed, or I was there, you know, my brother saved Harley from drowning in the wow, ocean. like weird. Awesome stories. Wow. Know. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. What an interesting perspective. I, I love that the New York Harker scene has so many characters. And, oh, yeah. And we're like a dysfunctional <laughs> family. We all love each other, but there's that ball break and that tough love. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's a family. We, don't, we, we may not agree on certain politics or different things, but we all know that deep down inside, we all come from this place and this scene of this music that brought us together in the first place. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's very dysfunctional, of course, and there's all yeah. kinds of like, <laughs> but I just, I love it. I'm proud to be. F- I'm proud of my band. I probably moved there, and my band was born there. And all these yeah. amazing people were really it's part of my your sto- part of your story and informs. Yeah. I mean, for me, yeah, it's part of my story and uh, informs a lot of uh, my thinking on things and uh, yeah. and and my perspective. And so, you know, I'm grateful for that. Especially, yeah. you know, you gotta you gotta get into your story, and make friends with it. Yeah. You know, the the more you kind of like go through go through life and I think like all that all those characters and all those kind of stories and some of it's just really fucking crazy in life like I don't why was I putting myself in these situations like what was what what kind of what happened to me yeah right because I was there too that's That's insane but you you have to uh, you know appreciate appreciate the, the what you learn well you always stay focused like I'm sure I know you partied here and there, but you always stayed focused on music and being creative, no matter where you were in life. I love it, and I, I love that so much. Yeah, you, you kept creating and music is not, the best. Not reinventing yourself because you're still Walter. Yeah, but just trying different things in music, and I think it's really important, man. I think it's so you get an idea in your head, and I think that that's like where it's just like an itch in your brain, and you just like want to manifest it outside. You know, like this podcast, for mm-hmm. example. Like, yeah, you you saw yourself talking with people, like having a conversation, and like it took. I know, remember when you were first doing it, yeah. like you just like going after it, you know what I mean? Was, and like yeah. learning and, and, and going like, but it's like manifesting whatever it is in your brain or, or your consciousness, your soul, whatever it is, uh, however you want to determine it. But like you have to get it outside. Right. And like the feeling of getting that outside of yourself, like that is art to me. And that is like the 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 function that you want to have yeah. with within your you know as you as you go through life and you, you just, bro- no you, just bro- and you just broke down PMA from Napoleon Hill is like what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve so uh, that and that's pretty much you just said yeah you know, having this goal and this vision and like putting it out there and I'm gonna do this and fo- I don't know it's incredible. well a lot of stuff doesn't work out for me to be honest but. It, <laughs> 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 and step one. Let's talk about the Keep things that do work Step out. one. Yeah. Step one is the easy step, to be honest. Yeah. Step but getting you know what I mean? like, I don't know. in the brain, seeing it in your brain, is 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 a, is the part. The first part. Right. Part two is like making the fucking calls, doing you know, taking the walk, doing you know, going grind, going to grind. do those things, and the pe- and the people that like are able to um, do that on a high level. I mean, maybe they don't even have like the best ideas, but they have the other part down. Right. You know what I mean? True. So, Or you have like a really cool idea, but it's too personal to you to mm-hmm. take the steps because if you, if, you, if you take your idea, you think it's so great and then you put it out there and people don't agree with you, yeah. well then, then you're really, you've got, that's a problem. You know but, what I mean? Yeah. So I think there are all kinds of different, that process is what I'm into. Yeah, but the, from an outside perspective, it looks like you never counted on anybody. You waited for this 
this band or get these people together. You did your shit and kept it moving. Like yeah. you were writing. You you weren't counting other people. You you right, did your shit yourself. Yeah. And I love that so I, yeah. much. Yeah, you know I, I mean? learned like, from from true. from people that you know I saw doing that Some and uh, and and I've been lucky <laughs> to like fucking still be doing it, man. Because yeah. it's it's not a. Um, yeah, I, I recognize like that that also plays a factor, but I I love doing it. I love that it takes me to places like Los Angeles to hang yeah, out with you guys. Have you here mm-hmm. playing a fucking cool show yeah. and with my friends and all that reward is just like massively worth it and I'm super grateful. Well thank you right for on. being here, man. I appreciate you being here. You have you got all your fanboy questions out the way. You're no, all good? they're all done. Okay. <laughs> ah good. It's good to have you in person in my kitchen because the phone thing that was back in the day. I know, dude. We were talking about doing this and it just it was great to have you. You, here, you did not have the shore sponsorship at that point. I'm chilling no, right now. Now you're changed. Now, Things have changed. Dead. Dr. <laughs> Dre hadn't heard yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like episode 140 or something. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing. cool. So cool. I remember man. talking back then about doing a pod and all that stuff. So I, I appreciate being part of my life story and still being part of my life, you know? For sure, bro. Derek, thanks for being here. Word. Ohio got mad love today. Yes. Definitely. I feel good about that. You know, I know you I can, <laughs> Dude. like really promoting this episode more so than any. Oh, okay. Yes. All my Cleveland peeps. Yeah, people in Cleveland know. Oh, no, sorry. sorry. 216. That's my Manhattan. Number uh, two one six. Oh, Thank you got you. corrected. Ooh. You got corrected. You got your new roots, bro. Oh, we can edit this, right? <laughs> nope. No two one two. Yeah, oh, two, to my two one two peeps. Yo. As well. <laughs> and congrats on the new record, man. The record's awesome. Oh, thanks yeah. so much, guys. Definitely right, thanks one for of being my here. Favorites. Right on. Yeah, signing off. Hey, y'all. Liquid Death's been so kind to give me a promo code. So for your first purchase on liquiddeath.com, go to liquiddeath.com slash O L O C, and you get a free set of koozies with your first purchase of H two O still or sparkling uh if not you could try it also at whole foods or 7-eleven use the promo code oloc for your first purchase of liquid death thank you liquid death for your support appreciate you so much murder your thirst h2o saves lives y'all